to this very special God of War Ragnarok spoiler slash chat podcast. Joining me, Oodles, today is Gadget. Hello. And Candy. Hello. As the only people of the team to have finished the game. <laughs> and only just as well. Literally. I think Biggie hasn't even started it. No, he's too too busy winning other things. He's too busy playing Battlefield 2048, uh, 2042, according to his fucking PlayStation <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, he hates it. It's a terrible game. Uh, yeah. But yes, we're just, what we're going to do, we're going to give you... This, there's not going to be a spoiler warning just yet. We're going to put that in slightly. We're going to have some spoiler-free discussions about the game. And then we're going to deep dive into it for an hour or so, maybe even a bit longer, depending on how long we can stay awake. So, if you've stumbled upon this and don't know what it is, God of War Ragnarok is an action-adventure game developed by Sony Santa Monica Studios. It was released worldwide on November the 9th, 2022, for the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, which, funnily enough, makes it the first cross-gen release in the God of War series, and it is the ninth installment in the series, and the ninth chronologically as well, and it's obviously the sequel to 2018's reboot slash reimagining God of War. Weird that we are doing a spoiler cast for a ninth installment of a game. <laughs> yeah, I think for a lot of people, though, it'll be their second game in the yes. series. Um, plus, the God of Four, as I used to call it for a long time. That was... Um, that was very much a reboot, even though it kind of linked in with the past, with the past, like with the PS2 and PS3 games. It kind of wasn't really. It didn't. It didn't yeah. have that much to do with it, apart from one epic reveal, which I fucking loved. But the rest of the game didn't care about what he did. Yeah, you could, you could have not played them. No, nah, yeah, exactly. I think they did well for writing it in a way that it respected those previous games without needing to, like, for they wrote it for a new audience, and it mm. was great. Yes. Me, for so, example. I hadn't played them. Have you not? Mm-mm. Oh, well, there you I did go. It, oh, I did tits. a quick history of Kratos before I uh, started 2018. But, uh... There's tits in the older games. Yeah, a lot oh, of shagging. well, maybe I'll go back then. Lots yeah, of shagging. Plenty of shagging. <laughs> Kratos <laughs> used to be a top shagger. Top it's shagger. literally a mini game where you've got to knock a statue off a bedpost, a, a bedside <laughs> table. I'm in. <laughs> That's not even a lie. But let's get into our little reactions from, and I don't mean our first impressions, I mean our overall impressions without spoiling it, because we'll do a little 10 minutes chat on this, and then people that have not played it can piss off. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Candy, as the freshest person to have completed this, what do you think? I've got a war Ragnarok without spoiling. I thought it was much more. Epic than 2018. I thought it was possibly a little bit bloated, but not by not by much. I I really enjoyed it. Like I said before, in modern escapism, I think it is. You would need really to have played 2018. It's it's this not one that you can get. Absolutely a sequel. Yeah, absolutely. Like literally, the the last scene of the first game becomes the first scene of the next <laughs> yeah. game. So yeah. yeah, I loved it. I think I would struggle to compare the two in terms of which one I liked more. I think maybe with a little bit of hindsight it will be easier. I think maybe I liked 2018 just a tiny bit more. Mm-hmm. But I mm-hmm. would I would I wouldn't like to put them between like in beside each other. You can't choose your chi- between your children, can you? Absolutely yeah, absolutely. I think Fair. both of them had points for them and for for them and against them. But I think maybe just by a hair I preferred 2018. That's cool. That's cool. Gadget, what do you think? What did you think? Yeah, I, th- I think that's fair. Like, I, I, I love the game, but I, I have some criticisms of it. I do think I preferred 2018 a bit more, but 2018 was very much a prologue to this. It's like kind of they're almost like they're kind of one very big game together. Yeah. Um, I could, I could see Sony Santa Monica doing what Naughty Dog did and like re up and God of War 2018 for PS5. Yeah. Like with the. Ragnarok engine and just having the two of them kind of link into each other in one really fucking big story. Um, two disc special or something like that. So yeah, something ridiculous like that. You know, a 400 gig download or something. <gasps> um, or, I mean, in terms of narrative, in terms of the presentation of it, I absolutely adored it. 
uh, I think technically it's one of the most brilliant PlayStation console, not even PlayStation, the console games ever done. Yeah. Like it's absolute wizardry what Santa Monica It's majestic, it, isn't the it? Tech. <laughs> Um, even down to the finer points, like like obviously the previous game was great for storytelling, which is ironic considering the first three games were not good for storytelling. It was just an angry creature. You got the story at the beginning and the story at the end. <laughs> yeah, now it happened in the middle of yeah. death. Um, <laughs> but the, um, the 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 way the story plays out here and the way they tell the story is fantastic. Um, even down to kind of like facial animations. Like I've talked about it a few times on the main podcast, but I absolutely adore the facial animations. Yeah. Um, everything is so lush and vibrant and detailed. This, I mean, there's moments where you can see kind of characters kind of chewing their inner, in, inner cheek when they're trying to think of something to say. And mm-hmm. sweating. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. It's just those micro expressions, isn't it? It's, it's incredible. It's, it's also incredible if you go back and watch a video of 2018, you can see how far the techs come on in four years. Yeah, there's one scene because as well where uh, Gadget... Uh, gadget. Oh, I call it Kratos, I mean, but you'll take that. Do you see all bald men the same? <laughs> yeah, I'm bald blind. Uh, yeah, Kratos, he, um, he flares his nostrils and the rattle. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Incredible. It's, it, it's, like really, it's really like kind of up the standard for what a AAA game should do now. It's not enough just to have a pretty world. You have to get those details right if you want to tell a convincing story in a yeah. AAA space. Like, Ubisoft aren't going to do anything like this for the next Assassin's Creed other than that. No. Not gonna <laughs> no. They're going to plastic compared to this. Every tree is identical. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. The, I, I'm, 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 I mirror a lot of what you guys say, but honestly, I think this is better than the first, than 2018. Mm. Um, upon reflection, it's weird though because when I played 2018, I become a dad again. Not not too much, not too much time after. So I really was relating to Kratos in that. And in this one, this is about how the fuck do you carry on in life when you feel like you've got nothing left? And that's how I feel like at the moment. So I related to that. <laughs> even I was just like, "Oh my god, this hus- this muscly hunk of a man is me in a real man's <laughs> body." And I, I don't know. I, I feel like if to do another one, what's it going to be then? Do you know what I mean? Am I going to relate to that? Even I, I, there's something about it. The gameplay is almost the same. It's mm. not massively different. It's got more to it, but it's not massively different. Um, I think I think that's where my main criticism comes in. We'll get into it properly and yes. spoil it, but I think there was there was a lot of the gameplay sections kind of dragged the game down for yes. me. This as is this is the, more of a game than the last game. Yeah, which is it's weird because my main criticism of 2018 was you're on a journey, but there wasn't really kind of a baddie or a final boss. Yeah, there's no emphasis to keep pushing on. Was there? No, it was just pushing on for grief. Whereas this one, there is a baddie. It kind of doesn't feel like it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I agree, I agree. But yeah, I still, I still think ultimately this is the better game. And it's a set such a standard. Not, and I don't mean just graphically, I mean as a package, as a AAA package. Everything oh, yeah. that comes out AAA is going to be held against this, especially single player games. And they've gone, they did it then. Why can't you do it now? Like Callisto Protocol is a very good example. Yeah. Like, well, even playing 2018, <laughs> I played 2018 um, directly before this one. I played it before, but I wanted to rem- remind myself. Yeah, me too. And even then, playing 2018 on a still PS5, it still, <laughs> it still felt what, like one of the best PS5 games I've played. Yeah. yeah. They did like, it didn't they? Like, they? They did it a 60 FPS version on yeah. the PS5, don't they? Oh, battery smooth. Oh, so smooth. But yes, now, dear listener, I'm, I'm assuming you guys that are listening. I've completed this game because the spoiler wall has been shifted. The it's disappeared. We are going full in now. What I'm going to do? I'm just going to read off some points I've got here. I've got a full story synopsis here. I will probably skip over some stuff, but feel free to jump in, guys, and we'll we'll just chat about favorite moments and things like that. So, this game. Several years have passed since the conclusion of 2018's God of War, which, again, surprised me straight away. Didn't think it'd be several years. But there we have it. Um, and I think, the, I, think, I think they kind of had to because uh, Sonny, the kid who plays a trade, oh, he was older. grew up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Because I think he was 12 when he played Atreus first. Yep. Um, he was 13 by the time the game came out. 
and they didn't start doing kind of motion capture and voice stuff until 2019 so he was already kind of 14 so he was <laughs> yeah. at the point where his vo- voice is about to drop and stuff like that yeah. so that had to make a trace older absolutely and so what fascinates me is a single line that uh Mimir says in the first game has come to pass Fimble winter has kicked in mm. um this was not a massive story beat in the last game because I'd only just played it. Obviously, they knew that if they killed Boulder in the last game, that Fimble Winter could come. It's come. <laughs> it's happened. Fimble Winter means like it's like Ever Winter or something like that. I think it does anyway, or Forever Frost or something like that. And it also signals that Ragnarok, the final battle of the Nine Realms, that will lead to the destruction of Asgard and the death of the gods, is coming. Now. We knew the game was called God of War Ragnarok. Did you expect to see Ragnarok in this game? I wasn't thinking. So we're in spoilers now. So yeah, I we are expect... in spoilers. So I wasn't expecting Ragnarok to be a physical manifestation. Being. I thought it was an event <laughs> rather than. A... Yeah. Yes, me too. Me too. But yeah, let's. I, I, did, push... I, I, I did like the process of Ragnarok and the yeah, whole. I did getting him involved and when he did appear and then did nothing. Yeah, that yep. was a waste of time. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, unsurprisingly, Kratos, our hero and gadget lookalike, wants nothing to do with it. Is that enough? Uh, following his dear departed wife, Faze Lead, he has created protection wards around his home, his, where he lives in his forest, to ward off Odin and rest of the gods and other people and, and baddies, as well as Freya, uh, uh, one of the... Uh, allies in the first game then becomes enemy um it's not gone over well with her has it where was she <laughs> he killed her son <laughs> it's not gone I mean, over well at all even he though Boulder was a dick he was snapping her neck <laughs> he was choking her out um but yes yeah, still she's been plaguing the lads for what seems to be a while now because when you first start the game you go on a toboggan a little sleigh ride don't you <laughs> And they're like, oh, she, there she is, as if they've seen her 400 times. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's going to be angry again. And it, that <laughs> is quite a fun launch to the game. If you remember the first one, you started it's off, a fu- it's a you're just in a boat, aren't launch you? To the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, first, the, the, the last one starts out very quietly, and this is just kind of like straight. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <sighs> yeah. A, yeah, a, quite a difficult battle, right, within the first hour. Oh God, yeah, yeah. So yeah, then we then we we, we already get his first emotional beat because um, Atreus's poor beloved dog Fenrir passes away, and something strange happens. A little mystical wisp of magic goes comes out of Fenrir, doesn't it? And we don't know what happens yeah. about that until later on. Yeah, I was and not prepared for that. That needed a warning. Yeah, that already it just shows in that first ten minutes. The emotions we're going to go through. I feel like it's a good parallel to the game in general. That first ten minutes, because oh, absolutely, yeah. After this, still to me, my favourite scene in the entire game happens. Oh no, no, no! Before this, um, they have a little argument. Atreus runs off, and Kratos tries to find him with Mimir. Mimir is his little headless, uh, um, Bod- no, bodiless head. Yeah, yeah, bodiless head. Um, he's he's like a platonic life mate for Kratos now. They're like two dads, aren't they? Yeah. Two dads and the son. And they go looking for Atreus. It turns out Atreus is an animorph um, from the famous books Animorphs. He's a bear. <laughs> he's an absolute bear. Which we knew that in mythology, because Atreus, also called Loki, Loki can shapeshift. Mm. He can. And I did not expect this bear to be Loki because it's got a different name, hasn't it? When you fight the boss. Uh, does it actually have a name? I thought it was just yeah, I didn't, I didn't notice. No, it has a name like Bjorn or something like that. Oh, just, yeah, okay. Just a random name. And I'm, I'm wailing to fuck on this bear, me, mate. <laughs> I'm ready to fucking pull his jar open. And we get the surprise there. It's, it's Atreus. It's Atreus all along. In a little weird daze. He didn't know he'd done it, did he? He can't control his powers yet. And then we go yeah, back on. Yeah. We go back on. There was actually going back to go that on. before you move on. There was actually mm-hmm. a line in um, 2018 where he's just yes. Atreus has just discovered that he's a god. Can I turn into animals? Yeah, exactly. 
So he, so there was a bit of foreshadowing there. In fact, yeah. everything that happens in Ragnarok was explained like it yes. just it set out exactly what the was going to happen. Complete prophecy, no surprises. Yeah. <laughs> It still mm-hmm. manages to be an amazing game. But yeah, the, the lads go back home, <clears throat> have a little kip, and then the ending to the last game starts. <laughs> yeah. big, big thunderstorm. Who's at the door? It's Thor. Oh my God. What do you think to Thor? How he looks, how he acts, how he speaks? Let's get some character analysis here, guys. What do you think? Oh, he yeah, was. I'd have put a towel under Pip. <laughs> so, yeah, man's a bear, oh, he was so isn't much he? bigger than I expected. There's the, the the one shot right at the beginning, and he's the the camera's kind of behind Thor, and you're just looking down on uh, Kratos, and mm-hmm. he looks tiny. Thor is just he a, is a clear two unit. foot taller than him. Easy. Yeah. Oh, and the rest. Yeah. And how uh, t- like Kratos is six five at least. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Probably more. So yeah. Absolutely. Do you know what fascinates me about Thor is straight away you get his character developments. Um, he's come in, he looks half cut already. He's sat down. Yep. He's got a bloated alcoholic's belly. Yep. He, and but he has he is muscly. He looks like a man that mm. used to look amazing. Do you know what I mean? He's let himself go. His beard's go- like. Did you notice? I, I mean, I don't know if you noticed these details. I played it twice, obviously, because I'm a weirdo. If you notice, if you look at his braids on his beard and stuff, it's all matted and yeah. like. Hanging off like he's not put his bobbles in. He doesn't care anymore. He stopped brushing his hair. That's a man that's just done. And surprisingly, he doesn't start off as a little boss. He comes in for a drink, doesn't he? Surprisingly, yeah. yeah. Because 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 then you get the kind of the reveal of Odin coming in, and I fucking love how they did Odin in this This game. This is the four is great, but Odin. Oh my god, having Richard Schiff play Odin. Um, he was he played Toby Ziegler in um, yeah. the West Wing uh, as this kind of fast, almost like a fast talking kind of mob boss. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like I re- I, I, also the fact that he had his cloak over his shoulders and all that as well, like given the full Marlon Brando, and not at all physically intimidating either. His no, stature well, no, no. as well. His stature is just he's kind of like, yeah, old man, kind of hunched over. Yeah, but absolute confidence, fast talking, and oh. God, he was so good. What I found... He, as, go on, sorry. As soon as he started talking, he's just like, oh, yeah, you're a bastard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I want to hear what you've got to say. Yes, that's <laughs> that's exactly what I was about to say. It, it seems like, in my head, Odin came there knowing he couldn't win in a one-on-one. It comes in, because he wants peace. It seems like he wants peace, doesn't he? It comes in and offers him a deal. Now, Kratos of the old games... Would have said, "All right, yeah, no bother." It'd have gone for peace. He's loathing for gods, and it seems his love for his son as well, and his son's curiosity, and his respect for his son's curiosity. Just for the first time in his like, in his career as a god, he just thought, "You know what? No, <laughs> fuck it." You know what I mean? And I, I, for me, that was the first moment where I thought, "That's a." That's a massively different Kratos. It seems like it's a Kratos that's like, I don't give a fuck anymore. I miss my wife. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's see what happens to chaos in a weird way. I don't know how you guys read that when he just refused his truce. I, th- I, I, think, it, I think it was more that um, it wasn't so much refusing the truce. It, it was more refusing to take a position in general. Mm. Like, yeah, it was like because I think if it, it like a previous Kratos would have just torn both of their heads off because he hated gods in yeah. general. Yeah, um, I think this would this was this was more of a no. We, we want to stay out. We want to stay in a little bubble away from fucking Ragnarok and all your bullshit. Mm-hmm. Just leave us alone. But that's the thing that you probably didn't notice because you've you've only played it once. It, it, Odin literally says, "We will leave you alone if you leave us alone." And Kratos goes, "No," but he does say, "The boy needs to stop looking for Tyr." And that's what makes Kratos go, you know what, fuck you. Oh, So he, he, literally say, he literally says to him, we'll leave you alone. I don't give a fuck about Ragnarok. I don't give a fuck about Midgard. I just, just fuck off. Just leave us alone. We'll leave you alone. And Kratos is having none of it. And I think it's more, he just does, doesn't want to um, make deals with gods, you know what I mean? I think that's what it boils down to. He's, he just loathes them completely, doesn't he? Mm. But yeah, then we jump into a, an amazing, quite difficult boss fight that has a, a lovely surprise. So, th- uh, so Odin says, right, okay, don't take long. 
Voss fling, flings, <laughs> flings um, Kratos with Mjolnir, and you end up near Tyr's temple, which is fucking miles away. And they have a big brawl. And he, he just he, he just fixed the roof of that house. Yeah, we <laughs> did. We <laughs> did. <laughs> and 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 the biggest thing happens because I, I, I just peek behind the curtain as well. I, I was playing it on the hardest difficulty. I thought I'm fucking failing here. I'm getting my ass whooped, and I died. I don't know yep. if you guys witnessed that. And, and thought, went, not on my watch. <laughs> You're not dying today. And he brought me back alive. Oh. Uh, apparently, you, you, that doesn't have to happen. Oh, you, you don't have to go into that state. No, no. I thought, I thought that was because because he gets you into that state with like a really the menu comes massive up, doesn't kind it? Of saying restart. Hell, hell, yeah, like a blow that properly drags your health. I thought it was like a scripted event. No, no, it doesn't have to happen. It ultimately will end up the exact same. But yeah, he's like, no, no, my watch or whatever he says, and he brings him back to life, and then you have a proper punch up. Um, you create a, an ever thunder lightning strike that sticks into the ice That's for so the cool. remainder of the game, which is so fucking metal. A, a lot of this game's fucking metal, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah. And um, yeah, uh, Brock and Cindy come and find you. You go back, and then you, you set out. Really, this is when the adventure really kicks into gear. This is when it starts happening. You go out looking for Tyr. Now, yes. the game opens up here. I'm not going to discuss everything that happens because that would be ridiculous because the game massively opens up. Unlike the uh, last game, you can explore, I think, is it every realm? I think not, not from the beginning. I think you get to not from the beginning. halfway through the game. Yeah, about halfway through the game, once you've basically been to each realm for its sto- first story mission. Yeah, you then you can, then can go everywhere. Pick, pick and choose where you want. Yeah. And kind of at that point, you can only really go to... Uh, Sindri's house, Midgard, and then you unlock the first mission, which takes you to Svartalfheim. That's the one. Yeah. Um, now, I want to ask you a question. I've got this written down. What's your favourite realm? Alfheim. Alfheim. Really? Mm, so pretty. Okay, okay. Gadget? Uh, I'm a big f- big fan of Alfheim. I liked Asgard. I, I, re- I really like the kind of pretty. look and the design of Asgard. My favourite yeah. Svartalfheim, and it's the first one you go to. Yeah, and I, I, I found sort of I'm, I found like kind of two sections of it a slog. I really like the bit where you're kind of at the lake and you're kind of free to go. You don't uh, like the mines, where as you please. Hated the mines. The mines <laughs> took fucking forever. Um, the mine, the, the mines just constantly. There's also the mountain. Of, um, it's probably the biggest realm, isn't it? If you think about it. It, it yeah. The mines especially reminded me of fucking Stonefang too. Um, <laughs> The the opening the open the opening to get into the town I yep. thought was all right, but the town itself was a bit of nothing because there was nobody there. Mm. Yeah. And it's not particularly yeah. easy to navigate, is it? It's not designed like a particularly well well designed town, I don't think, in terms of computer game. I mean, story wise, I suppose. I do like just... I do like that Kratos has to duck <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you go into that little pub and Bear McCreary sat there playing on the little uh Actually, Bear McCreary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so fucking cool. Yeah, can, 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 Candy just learned that this week. I did. Did when you? I, when I had to tell her what. When I had to tell her what it was after the uh, game awards. Yeah, I thought you yeah. were joking. I thought you no. just made a, made a name oh, that's up. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's a hurdy gurdy. <laughs> I love that. You can get wind up ones. You can get electric hurdy gurdies nowadays and stuff. <sighs> I really fucking want one. You can get wind ones, can't you? Where you blow into them. <laughs> Have you seen those? Uh, no, it's that. No, that's something, something different. Else? Hurdy gurdy. Hurdy Gurdy's got the kind of constant drone with the hand. That's it. a windy Mindy. A windy Mindy. <laughs> hey. But yes, uh, you explore. You do. You, th- this is when you get some side quests. I do want to talk about the side quest with the uh, the whale. Really mm. quickly. That was epic. I've spoken to a lot of people. They skipped this, not knowing it was a thing. Why? I just I just know people didn't do the chimneys, didn't do the you know what I mean the anchors. To me, that's. Uh, Mimir's quest. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. You get a lot of backstory on Mimir there, and you kind of find out how much of a thrall he was to Odin. Oh, he was now in we're... the... He was the consigliere to the mafia, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it that's what I do like about this game as well. All the side quests seem to be focused on certain people, certain characters, yeah. which the first game was like, this quest is about getting armour. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do things for ghosts. <laughs> Yeah, doing things for God. I can take them or leave them, but I, 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 I still did them. You know what I mean? It's good to get your levels up and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, I, did, I didn't. I didn't do a lot of the side quests of the game. I did do the one with the whale, um, but it, mm. it was taking me kind of too long to get through it. And because 
of my misguided desire to play the Callisto Protocol when it came out, I decided to just kind of like mainline the game. So I've still got the side quest to do, yeah. which I will do. I won't, I I won't I... spoil them all. There's some good ones in there. I think I got around the same point as you, Gadget, where I gave up on the side quest and I just wanted to know what happens because there's just such, there's so many to do and they're all, they're not just little side quests, are there? They're they're storylines unto themselves. The best tip about this game is, and obviously from playing it twice, the side quests seem to be designed to do after the game. I know it sounds weird because you get get better dialogue when you do it later on as the second playable character. When, yeah, I mean, when I mean you, there's also, there's, there's there's also stuff gone. in like Sval- in like early Svartalfheim which you wouldn't get to. Yeah, which you wouldn't be able to get to because you need like the spear and stuff yeah. like that. Do it all at the end. <laughs> mm. So yeah, then we we go on a whirlwind journey. Uh, I think we go to Alfheim before we actually go to the mines, don't we? I think so. Do we? Yes. Um, blah, 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 let me just quickly read there. The realm you visit subject gets decimate Odin's influence. Selfish. No, 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 you, 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 yeah? you, you, you get tier you, first. Yeah, tier first, and yeah. then you go to Alfheim. So, yeah, we, we, we'll go through the mines, we, we find tier. Now, let's talk about tier and what tier represents in this game, because that's how this spoiler cast is going to go. It's mainly character focused. Tier is not all he seems, is it, guys? <laughs> mm, bit of a... I've not emotionally recovered. Yeah, a bit of a broken down tier. So, tier. He's not Tyr, as you all know. He is Odin in disguise. Um, upon, you guys have not seen this, upon second playing of this, you can fucking tell when Tyr is real. Because when anyone says the name Tyr that isn't Tyr, they have an umlaut on his name. Tyr oh, speaks right. for himself without the umlaut. <laughs> that's a little... That's a- Little treat. Oh, interesting. And he also always, always re out without fail after um after Boy goes to Asgard, always calls him Loki after that. After that point. I I, I had noticed that. Yep. Yep. So there's there's loads of things he says as well. Um the fact that he won't fight with you and stuff like that, because Odin's not a fighter. And also I mean, it turns into a fight by the end, but it's magic, isn't Jesus it? Jesus Christ. It's magic rather than uh, what you'd expect here to be, a bit more like Kratos as the god of war. But yeah, uh, then you you end up going up and down the world into different... Uh, you do a lot of side missions, you go to Alfheim, all for MacGuffins, MacGuffins, MacGuffins for a while. It's quite... For me, after finding Tyr... And and then you get to go to Sindri's house and you've got your little Mass Effect Normandy base, haven't you? After yeah. that, I think it starts turning into 2018 for a little bit. Yeah. I think it's kind of, yeah, after that point. It becomes game that, for a while. Yeah, it, and it, it's where the game kind of falls down for me because um, you get, I mean, it's a long game. It's a very long game. Yeah. But you get long sections where fuck all happens. But you're fighting the same enemies constantly. It does have so more enemies in this, but some of them are palette swaps. Yeah, but it's the fucking nightmares. I hate yeah, the nightmares. Yeah. Little floaty bastards. So on the They're hardest the difficulty, on in. the hardest difficulty, do you know the nightmares how they splurt out that slime? One, yeah. hit, one hit kill that. Nope. Oh, great. Hate it. <laughs> Do you know what? It wasn't the nightmares for me. It was in, it was the, oh, I can't remember what they're called, but they do that weird song. And they're trying oh, yeah. to control what are they called? Yeah. Oh, the, the, they're the uh, knock-ons? Knock-ons, yeah. 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 I hated them. They, 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 they're kind of constantly buffing another enemy, yes. so right. you have to find them. Yeah. The one near the yeah, end where he's so in the fucking tree. Little goblins. Oh, God, I hated that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we, we, we play some game for a while. We do some side missions. We get some <laughs> armor. Um, no surprises yet. And then the surprise happens. Um, big argument. Is it, is it? No, no, it's not a big argument. Everyone goes to sleep. Kratos goes to sleep, and then something happens that blew my fucking socks off. We start controlling Atreus. Yeah. Yeah, it was a nice little surprise. And he does a clever thing. It just seems like you're walking about and running. He doesn't show what weapons he's got. You can't attack. So I just thought, oh, we're just playing as Atreus as we're walking around. We're not going to fight as Atreus. Oh, no, I was wrong. Um, I do like I, that first time. First time you get to a chest with a trace, he tries he to punch it open like his dad. <laughs> and then he breaks his hand. That was very funny. What do you think now? It's the time to talk about a trace now. Do you see how I'm doing this? Um, 
<laughs> what do you think to Atreus in this game? I think combat wise was a nice mm-hmm. surprise to me. Like you were saying, getting to control him firstly, but also getting to control him and he not be a total weakling. Like you can tell that he can really look after himself. Do you know, here's my but, hot take. Here's my hot take. Yeah. I wish I could have mainlined the game as Atreus. I preferred I th- I, I preferred think Atreus him. was more yeah, I think Atreus was more interesting to fight as than uh Kratos. I, ve- I barely used the bow when I was playing as Atreus. You don't I need to just whacking people with yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But like yeah. he suited my combat style more because like when I play like Souls games or whatever, it's always dex builds. Or, you know, like I like faster fighters rather than brawlers. Same. Same. So like he suited me down to the ground, actually. It was like Very a dex, dex mage, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I really liked his fight. You go and and this is when I I kind of predicted something at this point point because you get Sindri as your little ally. And then yeah. in my head I'm like, this is gonna happen a lot more with different people, yeah. different allies. And I was completely right. So this moves on to Sindri. What, oh go on, sorry. What gave me the clue to that, sorry, before you move on, is um when it says when you're when you're when you see the sort of menu screen, it doesn't say Atreus as your second. It just says your companion. Yes. So- yes. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, what do you think of Sindri then? I feel bad for him with that story that they gave him. Yeah. They kind of really fucked him around. Like, the entire run of the story, it's like you have to, you know, I have to give up his home to germy people. Yeah. A, a You've got to remember, he's got mental illness, hasn't he? He's got mental health issues. Yeah. He had to he had to give away some of his finest treasures for the yeah. for the cause. Yeah. Um He probably did the most sacrificing than anyone, didn't he, in the game? Yeah. Ultimately he lost his brother. He yeah. was just uh, oh, he's just rekindled best friend. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just so heartbreaking because he just even by the end of the game, he doesn't forgive you. Like this nope. guy has been the best friend to Atreus, he's helped him the whole way along. He was always the kind of light hearted, you know, he was always fairly chirpy, you know keep the mood up a little bit. And by the end, he's just a completely broken soul and he just doesn't forgive you. Yeah, the the, the game director, not the writer, not Corey Barlog. Is it Barlog? Yeah, Barlog. Not him. Um, uh, the game director stated that, in his mind, Sindri's the main character in this game. <laughs> he gets the end credits. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. How powerful is that, that this character that was a merchant in the first game <laughs> It's, Merchant comic relief. Yeah, he's he gets the he gets the end credits, the proper end credit. It's fucking mad. It's absolutely mad. But yeah, I I love I loved him in this. Um, it's not the last we're going to see of that guy. No, not in a million years, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to be an antagonist. Mm. It's also it's also really worth pointing out that Adam Harrington, who plays Sindri, did a fucking brilliant job playing him in this. Insane, insane, insane work. Um, yeah, they they sneak off together, have some battles. I can't remember for the life of me what they're looking for. I think they're just looking for more information on um, who he is, who 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 Atreus is, something along those lines. It's MacGuffin's galore. This game, basically. No, no, they're looking for the um, uh, some more of the uh, the the giants' shrines. That's the one. That's the one to actually because they can. He, he, he's found out that he can use his powers to access to go more into the shrines, giant yeah. knowledge, being half giant himself. Um, yeah, they want answers. It's the game is about answers, really, isn't it? Um, yeah. They get that. It comes back. Um, does Kratos spot him here, or is it later on that he spots him? He's like, "Where have you been, boy?" The, later on, that he catches him. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, more things happen. More game happens after. This is what I've noticed about this. Um, you get massive dumps of lore and great bit, and then game happens again, doesn't it? Mm. I will Pace say I don't li- think the environments were quite as well thought out as they were in 2018. There was a, there was a lot of like shoving you down tunnels and stuff, I think. Um, yeah, and I don't mean literally the ones places. that are secret loading screens. I mean like the, the, the environments are quite narrow around yes. you. Yes, they are. And obvious uh, encounter arenas as well. More obvious in this, I think. Um, it also, for me, my favourite realm in the first game was Midgard. I don't like a fully frosty place. <laughs> and we lost that, that, you know, we lost Earth basically to a fully frosty place. 
So it made, it made, it made do, Midgard feel dull. Well, I did think it was interesting. Really sell the, sell, they do really sell the coldness of Midgard, though. With like, yes. F- full credit to the art design. It looks brilliant. Did you ever do what I did? This is how I play games. Whenever I went back to Midgard, even if it were lower level, I put warmer armor on for Kratos. I, like, <laughs> I can't see him with his nipples out in gold. It's not fair. <laughs> That's one of his weapons. <laughs> Spiky, yeah. <laughs> spiky nipple attack. I did think it was interesting that they that Fimble Winter affected the different realms differently. So it was only like the Frosty Realm on Midgard. Yeah, yeah. Whereas uh, Svartalheim, it was the sort of noxious gases coming out, wasn't it, and all sorts. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, God, I, I, I also loved that. And then um, more things happen, and it ultimately um, leads to does... Atreus go to Midgard before he goes to Ironwood. No, he doesn't, does it? Ironwood first. Yeah, Ironwood, Ironwood first, where he meets Angerboda. Angerboda, my probably my favorite new character. I love her. I hate that level. Did Did you really? I know it's these proper split people. This level. Um, it, 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 I, I love the narrative stuff in it. Yeah, but what you actually do there takes so fucking long and just hangs around for far too long. You're helping her do her fucking shopping and feeding her pets, man. Yeah, the fruit collection yeah. one's fine. Not three times. Yeah, I never understood why it's three. Is that just artificial longevity tactics? It's artificial padding, I think. Yeah. They could have communicated all the information Angry Builder gives you a lot faster than that. Now, what I did love was the Jack and the Beanstalk level, where yeah, you, go to a, you go to a grandma's house, and as soon as I walked in, I went, Everything's massive. Hang on, yeah. Anger Boda's a giant. Oh, shit. And this then I was like, a giant. oh, shit. And then we go into the cellar and the stairs are massive. I was like, oh, my God, it's like Kingdom Hearts or something. I love that boss yeah, fight as well. That was my You come out and you have a game. Kingdom Hearts boss, don't you? This is yeah. the most Kingdom Hearts this game has ever been. And do, 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 don't forget as well, that's the, that snake that you rescue becomes the, snake. the next uh, Yeah, Although they don't actually yes. specify that, do they? They only say that, oh, that snake's got bigger. I think yep. I think yeah. most people would figure out that that's Yormungandr, but I thought that was quite interesting how they how they did the because they're supposed to be offspring of Loki, aren't they? Yormungandr. Yeah, the snake is. Yeah, it's supposed to be Loki's son. Yeah, so it's interesting that yes, Loki did create them. Yeah, I did skip the fact that uh, Loki did go to speak to Yormungandr again. <laughs> <laughs> Getting not but bollocks from him. <laughs> he couldn't speak to him before says, though. In the last game, he didn't. Iron words. Yeah, the, yeah, the last. Game he couldn't speak to him, but this game his yeah. eyes glow up and he's uh, got the lingo down. Yeah, he's got it down, got it down. But yeah, um, we come out. Is this when uh, Kratos catches him when he comes out of Ironwood? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, because he's been missing for like two days. Yes, and that again, I was like, whoa. And the game does that thing where nobody sleeps and stuff like that because obviously it's a constant camera. Um, time works differently in the uh, giant realm. Also, the main plot point of this. And what all that led up to was uh, Angerboda giving Loki more marbles and explaining yes. that the giants didn't disappear. They uh, put their souls into marbles. They hid. They hid. Um, and I do, I do love that when you, if, if, you, if you stand and look throughout um, Jotunheim, all the scenery is dead people, aren't they? They're all dead giants. Yeah. Mm. It's a fascinating design. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not necessarily dead giants. It's the remnants of dead giants. So yeah. it's like their ju- their jewelry, their armor, their helmets, their yeah. weapons, yeah. stuff like that. And I do like that. I think you the, actually see the, corpses. No, I don't think you do. And in the first game, it said that oh, not all giants are big. So at least at least you know that some giants just aren't big. I mean, imagine being that big and just giving birth to something tiny. Or the other way around. <laughs> or the other way around. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yes, um, we come back. The um, they have a little spat, don't they? And it, this forces, um, this forces uh, Atreus to don the name Loki and go to uh, ultimately to Asgard. Um, yeah. Although, although actually, just leading up to that, also you get the boss fight between Freya and Kratos, where oh, with Freya yes. is full Valkyrie. Because this is Which, this this is also why he goes off to go speak to Freya as well, doesn't it? This is what. Yeah. And and Freya's having well, none of it. I will say one of the letdowns of this game is like there was not enough Valkyrie fights because they were some of the best parts of the last game. Did you fight the I new don't... Valkyrie Queen? No, I, I haven't. <laughs> yet. I've, still got, I've, still got, I've still got the end game content to do. Mate, that makes up for it. <laughs> Trust me. Because the uh, fucking great, 
Graves of the Berserkers are not the same. They're not, They're not fun either. No. No. But yes, um, yeah, um, what's her name? What's her fucking Freya? Freya. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. She says, I'm never going to forgive him, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, he runs off to Asgard. I did not expect Asgard to look like Death Stranding. <laughs> it was very Death Stranding. <laughs> and there's no fight for a little bit, is there? You're just wandering around and looking. It's probably the realm where I literally span the camera around that much and just took it all in. It's stunning. Yeah. It's stunning, and especially when you start climbing the wall and you get those vistas over the countryside. Mm. Yeah, uh, be- just before you climb the wall, you, you meet the most unnecessary character in the game, that boy. <laughs> I can't even remember his Skulger? name. Skulger? Yeah. Skulger? Skulger? Something like that? Unnecessary. I don't get why he existed. Go. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> I, I, I just didn't get him. So then I was like, there's no way they're going to make him climb up this wall because that wall is fucking massive. It makes the snake eater ladder look ridiculous. Uh, you do. <laughs> you do climb it. And who's waiting at the top? The biggest cunt in gaming. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> not Id- Idris Elba. It certainly is not Idris Elba. Um, now, with... How do I, how do I put this without <laughs> sounding like... I kind of guess this is what's going to happen. <laughs> um, oh, what's his fucking name again? I just had it. I just had Heimdall. Written. Heimdall. Um, I guess because they spoke about him quite a lot before this. Yeah, they spoke about him, uh, especially if if you did a lot of side missions like I did. There's a big story that uh, Mimir uh, mentions about Heimdall and the um, Galahorn. Is it Galahorn? Yeah. Yeah, the Galahorn and how how much of a dick he is and immortal, impossible to beat and stuff like that. And in my head, at first I thought, is this going to be a big beast like he is in Thor in the Marvel films and stuff like Idris Elba? And then as I was wandering around, I'm like, as soon as someone stood on my fingers, on, on a tracer's fingers on the top of that mountain, I was like, that's Heimdall. <laughs> Did you guys think it would be? Not to begin with. Yeah, um, I didn't. Really? I, I, I figured it would be just mostly because that's Heimdall's job. He guards the realm. He guards the realm, and he's got glowing eyes, and I was like, this is him. This is him. And Didn't expect the cornrows. <laughs> Did he have a grill as well? He had gold teeth. He had a grill. Too. Yeah, he had gold teeth. Yeah. Yeah. He's an absolute yeah. ass. He's basically an influencer, isn't he? Basically, yeah. In it, I just looked up his voice actor. Uh, mm-hmm. also, you, you'll, you'll enjoy this. He current, he, the voice actor currently plays Flash in the Harley Quinn TV series. Does he? I oh, know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. He has got. He's got a typical American accent, and he's really <sighs> arrogant. That's the best way to put him. I think he knows. Yeah. He knows what's. He he can see everything. He sees into the oh, yeah, future. Sees see in the future. Sees into your heart. Sees into your mind. He knows yeah. what you're thinking. He knows what you're doing. Although, I don't, I, I, does he see in the future? I thought he just could, he, he could basically read your mind. He knew what you were no, going to do. No, no. So Heimdall's got the uh, the Bifrost foresight, so he can see his future. Right, okay. Only things that affect him, his future. So, oh, right. He's, oh, he yeah, looks like he's... not going to lead to an arrogant person. Exactly. <laughs> it looks like his speed, isn't it? But it's not. He just knows it's happening. He just knows it's happening. So yeah. he'll, 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 It's similar to how everyone thinks the Flash has got super speed, like Quicksilver in X-Men. He's not. He's got the speed force, which makes him stop time rather than be fast. It's it's weird, but yeah, um, yeah. He's got the gift of foresight. Um, he protects the realms. Great person to have atop of a <laughs> a massive cliff, because yeah. you'd see him and you'd be like, "Fuck this, I'm going," because <laughs> he's <laughs> horrible. He's horrible. He is. He is. He is a really dreadful, terrible person, and played so perfectly. Like you. You hate him from the first sentence. Like, yeah, he is. He is the definition of racist because he hates uh, Loki oh, yeah. just for the fact he hit, he hates Loki Atreus for the fact that he's half giant. Keeps calling him constantly. Calls him a half breed. Yes, and it's the um, only person that ever calls him that. Yeah, believes believes that um, that uh, Odin is wrong for not destroying all all of the non Aesir. Yeah, he hates Thor for that very reason for being half giant as well. Yeah. 
Oh, I don't think he says it to his face. No, <laughs> he's, not, he's not stupid. So yeah, he reluctantly does um, say, "My name's Loki. I've been invited." Uh, he reluctantly, t- it's weird. He takes him down the gondola, <laughs> <laughs> and then you just see a some very nice, some nice gondola action as well. Yeah, you see a very normal looking uh, fjord village, Viking village thing, just with lots of Valkyries training. <laughs> It seems really normal, and it surprised yeah. me. I was expecting golden cities, and I think I think you've been kind of spoiled by the MCU's yeah. version of Asgard, though. Yeah, that is kind of what you would that is what you would expect Asgard to look like. It's not a realm of the gods; it is a realm of the Aesir. Yes, you know? which is completely a, yeah, exactly. It's exactly. not Valhalla. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we go in there, and we see uh, all 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 his mates. Uh, we see Thor, Thor still does not like Loki at all, and I'm going to call him Loki while he's there because that's what everyone calls him. I don't think Thor likes anybody at that point. I the don't. Game. And then you meet um, Throod. I love Throod. He's cool. Great new character. Got a look of candy. Yep. Great hair. Great fabulous hair. hair. Can- you you candy, could cosplay you, as there's, there's, Throod so easily. Oh, I'm going yeah, to. Next year's Halloween Yeah, going to back, back home the old hair. That's all yeah. I need. Grass skirt on. Yep. Well, it's not grass, but it's like some kind of woven skirt thing. already got the tattoos. It'll be, yeah. grass, it'll be a grass skirt when I cosplay it. <laughs> <laughs> she's, a gr- she's a great character, and you can see the giant in her. She's quite yeah. uh, big for her age. She's like a dad. She takes after her dad rather than a mum. We, we also... They, they, they went hard with Sif's design as well, didn't they? Mm. Jesus oh. Christ, that woman. <laughs> yeah, they made her desirable, but also strong-looking. Scary. 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 Scary is the word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was very Amazonian design to that. I just wasn't seeing, the, seeing that one coming. Yeah. Yeah, expecting some kind of maiden or something like that, or a warrior yeah. princess, but she's just... <sighs> yeah, you wouldn't... Like, <laughs> there's a scene where uh, Thor and, um, and, and her, they have a, uh, an argument in the bedroom, don't they? <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> I would not want to upset that woman because even Thor's scared of her. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, the funny thing is... Um, you meet Odin, and everything seems super normal. It's like, you're not a prisoner. You can go whenever you want. Just speak to Bird. <clears throat> and go when you want. Uh, here's your bedroom. Here's Bird. Here's your bedroom from that bloke that you killed in last game. It was his bedroom. <laughs> it's uh, Moody's bedroom, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Remember when you killed him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have his bedroom. Mm. That's his cupboard. You can, you can, you can sharpen your, <laughs> your bow in there. Um, but I, yeah. I, 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 quite, I quite like and This kind of leans a little bit back towards Thor. Mm-hmm. I quite like that. Because obviously we didn't see Thor in the previous game. We just seen Modi and Magni. They were our only connection to Thor himself. And they are very much and, like the dad. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, they are they were kind of drunken, braggadacious assholes. Mm-hmm. And that translates so well into Thor himself. Yeah. Um but then you you start to see Thor through a different light because you start seeing seeing him through Thrud's eyes. Yes. And she just wants her dad to be all right. Mm. You just wants her dad and to be right. it's fucking heartbreaking throughout, because you can see how frustrated she is with Because Thor is a raging alcoholic. Wildly so. He's, like, he's even on a... Uh, there's, a little, there's a little dialogue thing you can see, because you, you can go around the hall and stuff and talk to people. There's a dialogue where it's like, oh, he'd done really well. He'd done 10 weeks without a drink. I'm like, what? Well, he's on a scheme. He's on a plan. <laughs> <laughs> on a five-step program. Uh, but he fucks yeah, that up but, later. But, yes, yeah, so, so, you also see kind of through through eyes as well. Mm. You see how Odin treats Thor, and you can see kind of why Thor drinks. Mm. Yes, Odin is he not just, nice to him at all. He's horrible to him, and he he always keeps saying all the way through, "Oh, it used to be so much fun, so much more fun." As if saying, "When you were half caught, when you're always drunk, yeah. Yeah. you were better." I enjoyed your company when you're drunk. I think yeah. he, actually, he actually does say that at one point. You you were so much more fun when you used to drink. Yeah, and he also has a, a little. Brief, Mark. If if did you know if you like when when you're in Odin's little underground lab, which is also weird. Um, Odin <laughs> Odin mutters to his son and stuff when he goes Boulder. I mean Loki, as if Boulder were his favorite. Do yeah. you know what I mean? I, it just I think Boulder was his favorite. Yeah, of course he was. He was he pissed off about his death, wasn't he? Massively. Um, but yeah, um, well, well, was it wasn't it the death of Balder that was that brought in Fimble Winter, which is the precursor to Ragnarok? Yes, so. yeah. So he's, all that rests on. I don't know if Thor's older than uh, Balder. I'm not sure. I don't know how that. I think he's. I think he's Balder's younger brother. Yes, it might be. Yeah, I think Balder's like the prodigal son, isn't he? He's the one. He's the proudest. He's yeah, yeah. And again, he still says that he loves Freya, doesn't he? So maybe that. 
Yeah, but can you can you really believe him though? Everything is a manipulation. This is the thing because now all the way through well, talking because well, well, because there's, there's, I'm not too skipping too far ahead. So there is that that moment at the very end mm-hmm. when kind of Freya, Freya and Odin, Freya's basically got Odin by by the noose thing. Yes, and uh, and he and he's like you know he's in he's clearly in trouble. Odin. Yeah. and he said you know I always loved you. Mm. Yeah, and it's just like like. Did he? Yeah, that's that, that, that's out of the toxic masculinity playbook right there. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. When the abused wife has he, has you at the end of a knife, you say, "I always loved you." Yeah, yeah. You know, it's <laughs> really horrible piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what we do find out in Odin's lab, I still think it's fantastic that Odin's got a lab because even in the poems and the in the history and stuff, he was a seeker of knowledge. That's why he lost his eye. You know what I mean for knowledge. Yeah. Um, and he, he he reveals this is this is the weird thing. He reveals everything that he wants to do to Loki. He says, I, "This here, this I want to I want to see what's in here." That's how I lost my eye by looking into this. I don't forget what he calls it. This void, this thing. It was it was just was it was it was just the all knowledge or something like the yeah the, yeah the all he want he wants he wants to know everything basically. Um, and he says we need to get this mask. Fragments from this mask are all over the realms. Uh, collect these pieces. You can read any language. So you're the one that can transcribe it and look for things and tell me where. And then, basically, you go with Thor then to... Is it... No, it's not Helheim, is it? It's... Muspelheim. 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 And you go and find them there, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this is... Angaboda turns back up because I thought she was just a dream at first. You know what I mean? She had a she 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 had kind of manic pixie dream girl vibes about her in yeah. general. But yeah, then she turns up there. I'm like, whoa, oh, okay. She can turn up there. You get more she knowledge. She sort of said that that was the end of her story in in Loki in Loki's future yeah. sort of thing. So it was yeah. surprising to see her again. That's I think that's a little spanner in the works as well to prophecy and stuff like that because she was never in any other prophecy well, after a, that. Yeah, well, that's well, that's the hint that it's not that. The game isn't going to be about Kratos dying and Loki being responsible exactly. for it, which is what the prophecy was. Yes. As soon as Angra Boda turns up again, that's her break in the prophecy and proving that yeah. she can write her own ending. Exactly, exactly. I think there's a lot more to Angra Boda than, than, than meets the eye in the grand scheme of the actual ongoing saga that we're going to see in the next games and stuff like that. Um, we smash cut back to uh, Kratos then. Um Basically, while he's looking for the mass stuff, uh, Kratos is looking to get to Asgard. Um, how do I get to Asgard? Blah blah blah. He goes to uh, find that that jungle land. He goes to Jungle Town. I forgot what it's called. That realm. Um, and meets Freya. That was a uh, that was a uh, Va- Vanaheim. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, they go to Van Heim and meets Freya, Freya's twin brother. Brilliant. They've got the same name. <laughs> and, and, he's a dr- and he's a drunk himbo. <laughs> he oh, is fucking absolute- love- I love Freya. He's great. He, just wants- he is great. He, w- he would be great to like hang out on a boot with. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah, he would. You know the kind of guy? He's, he's always got a cooler full of beers by him. Yeah. <laughs> and also- where the best party spots are. Gets the good drugs. It also <laughs> alludes to... Um, Mimir mentions in the last game that about Frey, and then he talks about Freya, Frey's brother. He just calls him Frey's brother, that calls him Frey's brother, and yeah. how everyone loved him, and the elves especially loved him. And we saw that in this. So in his little camp, we've got the pig guy that we we shot in the last game. I forgot his name. Ispolini or oh, yeah. Muspeltini or Margarita. I don't know his name. <laughs> Appletini. Mussolini. Yeah, Mussolini. <laughs> He's no longer a pig. He's now a cool guy. Idrisavir? Idrisavir? Something like that. Hitch. Hitch. Evindel Martini. Um, yeah, he's there. <laughs> and, and Freya's got a little, little cabal, hasn't he, of um, renegades and outcasts. He's got a dark elf and a light elf. Uh, and, a, and a light elf. Oh, I'm married. Ooh. Yeah. That's a good bit. And there's another little dwarf there. I forgot the dwarf's name. Uh, what's her name? Oh, God. I hated her character. The fucking yeah, girl. I was about to say. Maybe, Linda? maybe that was it. Yeah, Linda, yeah. She's shit. Crap. She just talks with a fucking Texan accent. Out of all the accents in this yeah. fucking game, where is Texan come? Because we got a South yeah. African dwarf <laughs> earlier on, didn't we? That's Sound, right, he sounded yeah. awesome. He was awesome. But then she's um, perfect for Brock. 
Yeah, I suppose. True, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, we find out uh, that ultimately, you, you go on a wild goose chase. Um, you need to um, help Freya, Gil Freya, from being a- able to enter any realm, don't you? Because she's yeah, got that thing where she's stuck in Midgard. So she's powerless, basically. And then you chase a Nidhogg, <laughs> which is just fucking brilliant. Did you love that boss? I love that boss, and I'm slightly disappointed they took this far into the game for us to get our first kill the big beastie boss. Mm. It, yes, absolutely, because we killed three dragons by this point in the last one. Yeah, because 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 in the first in the first game, it was typified by how epic most of the boss fights were. Yes, yeah, you fought. This is the Dark Souls two thing. You fought dudes in armor, fine. Yes, but, you know it's like there there were a lot more kind of awesome awesome bosses in terms of scale. Yeah, in the first game, in this game, there's only a handful. And it's really frustrating because, like, they know how to do it. They're over too soon. Yeah, they're, I love the over too soon. If you play it on hardest difficulty as well, it just makes it like such. This could be an, an end boss on the other games. You know what I mean? That's how. Yeah, like epic when it, it is. When, when it opens up a portal and just starts jabbing its tail through oh, it in yeah. different Mate. directions, that was I fucking laughed so much because oh, that's such so a good. clever way to use a boss that can do yeah. that. And it's a legendary Norse mythology, mythological creature, Nidog. Everyone knows about the Nidog. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just fucking sensational. We finally kill that. We don't realise what motion that sets in place by killing a Nidhogg. <laughs> that fucks up other things later on. Um, we free Freya of a, um, a curse. Um, I can't remember what's... Is it a heart or something like that that's stopping it happening? Or I don't know what it is. It's stopping it's, some it's, kind it's, of it's... bifrost or something. It's always bifrost, yeah, it's... isn't it? <laughs> it's always something. MacGuffin, I told you. It's always MacGuffin, but she's free now. <clears throat> so um, we ultimately find out that uh, I think <sighs> yes. Then we after we kill the nigger, we smash back to Atreus slash Loki. He goes on a little reconnaissance mission with Thrud, which I fucking enjoyed. We go to Helheim, don't we? Yeah. Which I, I didn't, didn't expect it yeah. to be like this. Yeah. The docks. The, do you know what I mean? Because oh, we, right, we see yeah, a lot yeah, more. Remember, if you remember Helheim from the first game. It's a corridor. You see a lot more of it, yeah. It's, 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 oh, it's, a corridor, yeah. it's just a corridor to the bird, <laughs> to hell. And that's it. Yeah. And I, then you walk back. It, oh, yeah. It was an inter- interesting thing. I did, uh, the, um, the whole thing with Garm was a bit weird. Yes. So, so, see, I, I yeah. thought Odin had deliberately put the mask in the wrong place, but put them in harm's way to, to fight Garm. We never get answers to that. That's the problem. No, we don't. And we don't know Odin's thing. But this is where, obviously, the free Garm, which is a Garm Garm, which is... Um, Garm. The, it's it's, it's uh, North mythology's Cerberus, basically. Um, it can chew fabric of time and space. It can destroy realms. <laughs> You've got too much powerful things in, yeah. <laughs> in this mythology. Um, this is where... Um, Loki then says, I'm out, I can't, I've got to go back home. And Odin goes, okay. It's weird, isn't it? Mm. And then he puts, he puts him back into uh, his home on Midgard, his actual cabin. And the bird just yeah. stays there, doesn't it? Ready for you, the crow. Yeah. And this you, is when... You, this, this you, is when Hugin's a good lad. Yeah, he's a good lad. It's when you go into the, um, into the portal and Kratos is waiting for you in the place in between or whatever it's called. On the... Um, the what's it called? Yggdrasil. The world tree. Yggdrasil, yeah. He's waiting for him, isn't he? And that moment is the first moment. No, no, of no, 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 no. Is no, it not? No, you, 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 you're getting mixed up. That happens um, after. Um, that, that happens after the first time, like um, Atreus catches Loki. Uh, Loki, um, Atreus pissing off. Now, Does what it? happens this time is you you go through Yggdrasil, you come back to S- uh, Sindri's house, and the Hellwalkers are attacking Sindri's house. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. So I missed that moment. Then, yeah, the moment that I'm talking about is before that. It's the first time I cried in this game. Um, <clears throat> the dog didn't get me. Never does. No, this... it's, it's um, it's it, it's that it's that bit where you end up fighting um Freya. Yeah, Valkyrie. Yes, that's the one. Um, and Kratos looks at him. You think he's gonna scream at him? He hugs him. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that was nice. He fucking hugs him. I'm glad you said. He doesn't talk about it. And, and, oh, and it's the bit that broke my heart. He goes, do I call you Atreus or Loki? I'm like, yeah. fucking hell. 
loved. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah. oh my God, he's just accepted his son for the first time. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's a massive moment. You know well, he I mean? was also oh. asking if he was working with um, yeah. Odin or what, Odin. if he was still working for them. You know, that's, that was that's the why he that's asked him that took, name. That's what I mean. That's what, that's what I yeah. took from it. Yeah. But he still accepted him. He accepted his journey. But yeah, we go back. Uh, Sindri's house is attacked. Um, it's all kicking off, isn't it? Is this where we get the reveal of Tyr? No, no, that's not, what no not, not yet. Not, is it? Not, not yet, because because this is where um, Atreus breaks down, admits what he did with Garm. He gets a thorough telling off from the head, which was fucking hilarious. Uh, yes, um, they have to stop it then, don't they? They have to find yeah, Garm. Which which takes me to my least favorite level because going through Helheim a second time in a row, very close succession. On, very long corridors of the same enemies. Oh, the dock's not again. good, is it? And the same puzzles where it's just like, hold the door open, yeah. find, the, find where you get to throw the fucking ice thing to hold but the door. But you do get the find best the joke in the... You get the best joke in the game at this very moment where Kratos runs off and loops in and goes, oh, he always does that. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? That's, I love that bit. Yeah. <clears throat> he loves Luke. Yeah, so he- <laughs> Yeah, so you get you get the Garm, you get the second the second encounter with Garm. Yeah, where you have to fight him. You fight him three or four times Tough. throughout this level. I, that's the hardest body from bossing well, on the hardest difficulty for me. Yeah, absolutely. And Atreus realizes because he's got Fenrir's soul in his knife, which is what Angra Boda had told him about yes. earlier. Um, comes up with a solution, which is basically because Garm doesn't have a soul. Garm can't die. Can't Garm just exists yeah. as id, um, no ego. So. Stabs yeah. him with the knife, and that's when we get Fenrir reborn as a giant puppy. Yeah, and he's so cute. Yeah. He is cute. <laughs> Did you notice his face changes to look more like yeah. Fenrir? Look like he a looks, dog. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's so good. I was so happy about that. And, that, and then he went, "Go home." Kratos goes, "Go home." And we don't see him for a while, do we? And I thought, "Where's the fuck no, is he gone?" No, the, no. The, the 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 best the best thing was it, it, it's Fenrir died, and he looks up and he goes, "Sit." As yeah. Thunk. Yeah. This giant dog yeah. Just yeah. Immediately sits. I'm like. Fucking brilliant, <clears throat> good boy. But like Did you said, we didn't meet his soul in the knife because I know Angra Boda said, "Oh, there's somebody's soul in that knife." I, I thought think it might he have been just phase. No, I think he knew because he remembers that happening. Right. Um. Oh, he just took a stab in the dark. Pun intended. We. Hey. And I do. He says, "Go home." Uh, but again, like I just said, we didn't need all that Helheim to get to this bit. Why can't we just teleport no. to this bit? Would have made so much more yeah, sense, like, wouldn't it? Like, I wouldn't. I, w- I wouldn't mind having Helheim if you were just having to chase yeah. Garm through it. Yeah, but you have a but full section. All those, oh god, all those combat sections, and this is also the point of the game where the enemies get super spongy, and like, they get. And, and when 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 they're in this this realm as well, they've got the frost protection as well. So you got yeah, you're forced like to use out. the blades. Like some of the Hellwalkers were taking like 15, 16 hits mm. to take yes. down. Yes, 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 there were, yes, there were. Unless you had and some it, when. When they're mobbing you, it's really hard to manage those fights. Even like by that point, you should have upgraded a load of stuff. And Kratos has a load of abilities. Yeah. But even then, it's just not fun to be constantly dodging around a fight to try and do that. On the hardest difficulty, I will tell you now, that's the hardest section in the game that returned to to Helheim. It really is. See on the on the one under normal, which I was playing on just so we could get through, because Pip was enjoying watching the story. Yeah, that was the most boring section of the game. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did. I didn't like it either. It's artificial padding, like you said. But yeah, we go back. Then we find out that basically he starts talking. Freya's fine again, isn't she? We get talking that maybe we have to go through the prophecy, and maybe we will start Ragnarok, or maybe not. But we're never going to be able to beat Heimdall. We're never going to be able to beat him. Because you can see, it can see one step in front all the time. And then Sindri comes into action, and one of my favourite sequences in the game happens when he Scrooge McDucks that shit, and he goes into his yeah. little gold pot, <laughs> wishing well, <laughs> and it's just got so many. And he gets that um, the ring. What's the ring called again? Can you remember? Drop near. That's the one. He gets that well, ring. It, so, so the, 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 the well thing was full of rings. It was to hide yeah. Drop near. Yeah, yeah, but right, still. Actually, I think that, I think that no, I think they were all spawned from Drop. Yeah, they yeah. Why he had it on him. a rope. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He drops it and it does. It just goes everywhere, doesn't it? It's so cool. And he almost loses the right one. At what point though moves... did we go and see the no? Is it the Norns? Like the three sisters, the three. The no- the Norns is um, while Atreus is um, going back uh, just before before Atreus goes to to um, Helheim in the first. Yes, place. we missed is that. It, yeah. Th- 
I good sequence that. that. Good. Yeah, because it, it kind of showed that actually they're not prophesizing anything. They're just taking, they're like the experts of human nature. They're just taking yeah. everyone's behavior and they're making a prophecy through, and then they're nearly always right, but they're making a prophecy through what they think is going to happen, not what they've seen, not what they know. Yeah. Like, you won't know this, Candy, but in the second game, Kratos goes to see the Greek version of these, the Fates, and there's dialogue that these guys say exactly the same. Hmm. I don't know if you remember that, Gadget, because it's probably been a long time since you've played two. I vague, I have a When he goes back, he it. goes to kill the Fates, basically. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Which, uh, I mean, there, is a, there is a discussion I'm, I'm, when he goes to see these ones, like, oh, I'm going to have to kill him. <laughs> I've done this before. <laughs> I mean, it's character development that he doesn't kill them. That, uh, that, that is yeah. impressive. Yeah. And is, did, isn't I, that I did, like that room like of that hair whole... or whatever it is, isn't it? It's like a... Yeah. I, I really like that whole sequence. Again, I, I thought the lead up to it was kind of artificial padding because, like, you go to one place. Oh, no, this isn't the right place. Go to the yeah, next place. Oh, no, yeah. this isn't the right place. Like, fuck's sake, just take me to where we I need to We didn't need the be. game to be 40 hours <laughs> long, did we, really? No. It would have been a better as a tight 20. Yeah. Like, it would have been 100, like 100, 100 out of 100 if it were a tight 20 hours. Yeah. I'm, I am uh, glad you brought up the nons, but yeah, that's a, that's a, big, a big bit I missed. Um, uh, and, and, and also, you know, getting a ride of Selkie. Yes. That was beautiful. Yeah. And, and again, one shot. Yeah. I, I, I want to see the boundary break on this game. <laughs> when the speedrunners get to it <laughs> I want to see how they're going to get past certain things like this you know what I mean the glitch runs <laughs> how are they going to get past that bit but yeah um, we basically we have, we have to go and create a weapon to kill Heimdall so we go to back to Svartalfheim again <laughs> again for the 400th time um, we've, been in, we've been in minecarts we're before this game. yeah we've been yeah, it is we've been in minecarts where we're going back in again we go to the forge. Now, I got to the gates of the forge very early on in this game and wondered if I were ever going to come back. Yeah, you come back. But yeah. you go to uh, the best blacksmith or whatever in the world, and it's a mermaid. You take Brock with you because Atreus has gone back to Asgard. Has he gone back to Asgard to discuss things, find out things? I think he has. Uh, no, again, this, again, this is just before Garm. Is it? Is it? Have I gone that? Yeah. Ba- have you got the sp- the yeah. spear by this point? Fucking hell, I've missed that up. Yeah, <clears throat> but yeah. Well, but yeah, because he used the spear during the fight with Garm to break its shackles. Fuck, of course you did. Yeah, yeah, I missed that then. But yeah, you get the spear. Now, I want to talk about the spear. It's my favorite weapon. Oh, I only used it for the Heimdall fight. Yeah, I I barely used it. Are you crazy? I found oh. I found it frustrating to aim. I didn't aim it. I used it as a as a pike as a. So when you play yeah, when what? you play on the hardest difficulty and you level this up to max, it's the the highest percentage of damage, the uh, DPS. Well, I th- I think that as well because like because uh, I wasn't doing the side quests or anything like that, so I wasn't okay. getting the upgrade materials. Yeah, for it. that's true. That's so true. like by the time I finished the game, this was two levels lower than my other weapons, and it just wasn't doing the damage. Mm-hmm. There's a special weapon out there it does, which is like a phalanx multi spear thrust, and without that, oh, I wouldn't right. be able to beat the game. And especially the last super boss, the mega boss. Um, but yeah, we've got all that. Let's skip to the thing, the 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 the, the piece, the set piece at the end. Now, so everything correlates. Um, there's a weird bit where you go back to uh, Jungle Town and you go on a on a, a plane ride or something, don't you? And well, yeah, no. no so you, you're getting Eddie as well again here. So I'm I, um, bloody hell, this game's yeah, so long. You, <laughs> they um they so they learned that Freya's captured by the Aesir. So Kratos um Kratos and Freya go yeah. back to Vanaheim to rescue Freya. Yes. Um and and that's and that's where Kratos is forced to have the boss fight with Heimdall. Mm. Oh shit, yes. This is where he actually kills him. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to, does he? But Heimdall being the dick that he is. Says you've got to do it. It's fate or whatever, something like that. Ragnarok's going to happen. And he's like, so be it. <laughs> it he needed him. to die, though. Oh God, bring on There's Ragnarok. No way that man that. could have. Yeah, it's worth Ragnarok for that. I did not um, like this boss fight. I thought it was long not, and did boring. You, did, you, did you get the mechanics to it? I got the mechanics to it. I just thought it was just long and boring. And what was it? Three phases. Yes, phases. But, it's fair, but every time you've done a phase, it check marks it, even on the hardest difficulty. Check yeah, marks that, it. yeah, that 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 was that was the whole thing because you had the first phase where you had to try and 
basically get a line of the of the spears in the ground for him to mm. be hit over so you could kind of break his guard. Then you had three phases of the fight. Yeah. So that's up to four. At which point you win it, you get the cutscene where he says, where like Kratos tries to walk away from him and say, I'm not going to kill you today. And he's like, no, fuck you. You don't get to choose for me. So Kratos blows his arm off. Yeah. Um, and then that's when you fight kind of magicked up um, uh, Heimdall. And then that, that's the last. So it's, yeah, it's five phase fight. I will admit, I did enjoy seeing Heimdall die. Mm. I did. I did. He I wanted him to die better. I don't think he died. No, 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 no. Hands around the throat is exactly what he deserved. Oh, yeah, I suppose. That was cathartic. I'd love, his, I'd love his head to explode or something like that. I, I, I used to. I like. I like how he killed. Anna, this is one of those few characters that need to suffer. No, but imagine the death scene on uh, God of War three when he kills Poseidon, where you're looking through Poseidon's eyes and he's bashing this fucking skull. Do you remember that one? Well, what, what, what about what about when he kills? Um... Uh, Zeus and he goes first person and you're basically just pummeling him into the <laughs> into the rocks <laughs> yeah I wanted a bit more of that but yeah they, they, they can't cut like that in this game can they so no. yeah it's really good uh, then we go on the little aeroplane I can't remember why we're going on an aeroplane but that guy it fought was, it, 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 it was to escape it was just to escape was, and there were um, some dragons and stuff weren't there yeah it was it was uh, Freya's boat that's Fresh the one. It's the boat, boat not an aeroplane. After that aeroplane. character invented then. killed himself, or well, he didn't kill himself. He killed. He sacrificed himself. Well, yeah, I don't even know what off. character that was. Like, it was a Hilda that was, Spini. That or... was no, no, no. He was one of the um, one of the uh, he, he he one of them traveler knights, but he's a goodie. You know them traveler yeah. bosses that you fight, the mini bosses. Oh, he's one okay. of them. Oh but shit! He's a goodie one. Yeah, he's got the same armor on. He's a goodie one. Supporter of Freya. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, I've, there wasn't much for somebody that to sacrifice himself. There wasn't much character development was, with him. I, I, yeah. I didn't care. Like, there, is that, there is that little bit where Kratos went, "Oh, he's fallen off, not his name. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't even know his fucking name." <laughs> but yeah, he, he actually—that's just a plot point to say there's an there's an end game area where he's gone. Did you notice that the uh, the pit or something like that? The crater. Oh, uh, okay. Have you not seen that gadget? No, not yet. Basically, if you do the mission to find him, it's the biggest open area the game has seen. So you've there's, Ooh, nice. there's about six hours of gameplay in that one area. It's the biggest open area of the <laughs> game. It's bigger than Svartalfheim, and it's it's just massive. It's where all the super bosses are and stuff. Right. Okay. Fair remember, enough. remember at Final Fantasy X when you get to the Calm Lands. Mm. Yeah. Think that, but devilish. Oh, lovely, 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 lovely! And it's got a night and day cycle where at night everything's harder. So, of course, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's a good area. It, it looks like a, it. It plays and thematically, it's a DLC style area. No, it just exists. Yeah, and all you're doing is going to rescue him, but it's massive. Uh, do, do do that though. It's called. I think it's called the crater, something like that. But yeah, all right. uh, that's all that bit's for. That's what that payoff is for. He sacrifices himself, so you got, you have to go and look for him and. Get the end end game area, but it's cool. Um, right, I think is is now. And now are we going to Ragnarok? <laughs> no, no, so 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 at this at this point, um, we go back uh, to Tia's temple, don't we, for something? No, no. So at this point, Atreus has found all the parts of the Loki mask. Oh shit! Which, um, yeah, the reveal hasn't happened is, either. Well, yeah, the, which is this is the point where we get the reveal. So they go back to Sindri's house. And uh, Tia has a sudden change of heart because he's been a pacifist throughout, but now that he has the mask, he, he, he's ready to go to war. He's a secret way in. Brock is very suspicious of him, which and starts kind of. Should we call him Tia. Loki? <laughs> yeah, Tia loses his fucking shit, pulls out a knife, fatally stabs, stabs Brock, and everyone, and then transforms back into Odin. Do you think? Because uh, it, the... it turns out there's been a fucking raven hiding in the in the fucking in the cupboard. cupboard. <laughs> Do you think they should have? I I, don't, I I think the reveal was very quick. I think they should have lingered on. It looked like Tyr just killed Brock. No, for, no, no. For I a little bit I longer. Think, I, th- I think it worked as it was because it was such a shocking thing. In general, mm. um, you needed to see that it was Odin quite quickly. It was still such a massive blow. It was such a shock. Mm. Uh, that doesn't that force Loki to run off as well? Uh, sort of. It, it's um, uh, Kratos takes. Um, oh yeah, let's to, go hunting to to Midgard, and they go hunting, which is, it's another kind of padding thing. I, I didn't like this bit of character development so much because 
Loki's we're all saying the names are. I'm going to keep going. Atreus is kind of like upset <laughs> by the de- by the death of Brock. Mm-hmm. He has been around a lot of death. He has killed a lot of things. Like this is that kind of ludo narrative distance that you get with games. Yeah, where this is where just the, the shopkeeper the don't reflect the narrative. <laughs> See, I really. It's, it's just the shopkeeper, but he, but he has been around a lot of death, and he has been around a lot of main characters dying. You know. See, yeah, I really like this true. moment because Kratos was just like, "We're done. They've won." Let's this is yeah. This is where he says I, I, he doesn't want to do anything else. He's gone back, but the truce is done now, isn't it? Yeah, Ragnar- Ragnarok's anymore. coming. Let's just spend the rest of the time Let's together doing what you want to do. Yeah, you actually do go hunting as well, don't you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's mad. Um. Do we see Fenrir in this bit again? Doesn't he? Come? Yeah, he's kicking. Yeah, he's, he's kick, kicking about. At he's kicking about, and then he's just, just the giant in the, in the forest. Just, it, it's, the, 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 um, yeah, because because yeah, they, they were talking in the house, and they come out of the house, and just this, this kind of tree trunk smashes down in front of them, <laughs> yeah. and then Fenrir hops over as if he's wanting to play a fetch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like come on, mate, you're a good boy. He is. A, he's the best boy. But yeah. Uh, that happens. Uh, they go back then to the house. Um, they try and start a plan. Shinji comes out from the balcony and says, I'll go speak at Svartlam. He's not happy, though, is he? Oh, no. Well, clearly not. Yeah, obviously. Um, but uh, just before that as well, he tells Loki that it's his fault as well, doesn't he? Mm. Yeah, he blames yeah. You wanted him. to do this. You wanted to look for Tyr. You've led him to my house. I invited you all into my house. You were guests, and look what you've done. You've killed my fucking best friend and slash brother. He it, it, it kind of doesn't blame Kratos for it, which is weird. It's not really it's Kratos' It's kind of more fault. Kratos' fault. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I, think I mean, really I think is. when you go and do the, the Viking funeral, I think he, it's fairly obvious that he does also blame Kratos. Yeah, by that point. <laughs> by that point, yeah. Yeah, but it's, this this is all, again, like everything in Kratos' life. It's all Kratos' fault. I think it's because Atreus just... was his friend, wasn't he? He feels more betrayed. Like He, he never really had a particular friend. relationship with Kratos other than building his armour, but he went on adventures with Atreus. And they yeah, were, even yeah. in the first game, they were friends. They had a rapport. Yeah, so now we, we, we go to the ultimate climax. Um, each person, each ally that we've created, the... the, the uh, Members of the Normandy, you've done all their missions for them. You've done all their friendship missions. Well, I, there is one more mission to do because they have to get Ragnarok himself. They have to go see Sertia. I was a, just about to say it. All just, right, yeah, because they go to Musful, Musfulheim. Yeah, so Musfulheim, and they go and speak to Sertia. I didn't expect him to be like, go away. Yeah. <laughs> That's all he's like. Go away. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> expect him to throw a fucking stone colossus at you. Jesus fucking Christ, I was not prepared for that fight. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Um, he had Dr. Manhattan vibes. Yeah, yeah he turns out that um, Serta uh, doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't give a fuck because he's, he's just a man in love. And he says, have you ever tried being in love? I love that. I love that. Have you ever tried being yeah. in love? It's fantastic. Um, he's got his, his lover's heart inside of him. So I love the design of him, where his kind of, his his body is kind of charred, brittle wood. Yeah, but he's got like this permafrost on him from his his wife, wife girlfriend's wife, half, yeah. which is ice. Yeah, um, fucking... I thought that was a fucking brilliant design. And they go to the place beyond. Uh, I don't know what it's called. I think it's called the place beyond, something like that. Beautiful the, the scenery. Sp- spark of the world. Spark of the world. That's it. Beautiful. Uh, cosmological. Very, very synth wave. Very simple, very modern escapism, and then oh, yes. <laughs> and then you you, you fight two Valkyries, <laughs> yeah. which was my favorite boss fight in the whole game. That was fantastic, and they're just berating you all the way through it. Oh, that was the, the thing is it was like unrelenting because like they're proper tag team in you, mm, like you know when one, when when one flips onto you, the other one flips onto Atreus, and vice versa. You have to constantly be aware of Atreus getting picked up, and you have to like, kind of knock him out of their their wings. Yeah. And then they'll like fly off the side and they'll do like area of effect attacks on you. Oh, it was great. I fucking love really, that. Really, really good. Uh, and then, um, yeah, Serta does what he needs to do. Um, he becomes Ragnarok. Um, the Before bit we where... move on, the, the bit where you mentioned, oh, have you ever tried being in love? There's, there was a moment that made me laugh and I can't remember at what point. It's when Atreus mm-hmm. has gone off with um, Angra Boda. Mm-hmm. And um, if you go to, if you go to uh, Loki, Atreus's room, Kratos says something along the lines of, have I taught him how to love? Have I taught him how yeah. to woo her? <laughs> yeah, like yeah he does. It's awkward thing. And Mimir's like, I think I taught him how to do that, brother. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, there is that bit as well. That's so funny. It reminds me of that thing, you can woo a woman with a piece of cheese. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and it works every time, by the way. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, um, Serta accepts fate. Uh, everyone accepts fate. And then they go to the, um, the war camp at Tears Temple. Another one of my favourite scenes where everyone's read it. <clears throat> they say to Kratos, you need to be what you were born to be, what you used to be in Greece. You were the general. And he was. Before he was a god, he was a general. I mean, he was born a god, but he didn't know that. He was a general. You don't know this, Candy, because you've not played the other games. <laughs> he was I've general the in the Spartan Army. Yeah, he's a general in the Spartan Army. And he takes up that mantle again, doesn't he? He reluctantly accepts he does. being a general. But there's the scene where, oh, God, Freya goes, that's your tent. And she goes to Loki, that's your tent. It's like, oh, separate tents. Well, yeah, you get your own tent. Of course you do. And Kratos goes in, lies down. And before he can sleep, Atreus comes in and goes, can I, can I sleep next to you, please? I thought, oh, he's still a little boy. I'd be, I, <laughs> my, my son's like 10 years old. And if he has a nightmare, he'll still, can I get in bed? Ten-year-old, do you know what I mean? Mm. It never stops. I don't think it ever stops, does it? And it's a beautiful moment. Uh, he has, I mean, all we through this game, he has, he has um, visions of his, his wife, uh, Faye. This is the longest yeah. vision, isn't it, this one, where a lot of, a lot of stuff is explained and stuff. I never, in these visions, Kratos is really quiet around Faye, isn't he? And she makes light on that as well she takes the piss out of him about it i, I think... love that she calls him grumbles <laughs> grumbles <That's just laughs> yeah. fucking adorable i think this is why he loved her so much because look how calm he is around her how quiet how yeah just relaxed he is around her <clears throat> and that's i think that's the final uh, little flashback he has to her doesn't he? little dream mm. sequence and again how in a gameplay uh, in, in a game design there's no cutaways into that dream you still watch him. He no. closes his eyes. You're still watching him. And they're pulled back from the tent, and you're not in the tent anymore. I so fucking sensational. I, I love the way the very first dream happens. It's like early on in the game after the prologue, like Kratos falls asleep, and you just see a hand come yeah. around his chest. Yes. And like wakes him up. Like it's so well. But you done. see what the it's camera so does? It, it, the camera turns, so it looks like he's stood up then. Yeah. And he just keeps yeah. what? He keeps what? Oh my God, it's so good. But yeah, that's basically the final sleep before. The actual war. We go into Tears Temple, the, the Bifrost, the original one, because we've got to get, because the temple on Asgard has been destroyed. We knew that from the first game as well, consistent. Um, <clears throat> we need to get in. And it happens, doesn't it? The, the Ragnarok kicks in. The big war. Yes. It's not as big as, as, as a spectacle as I expected. Oh, I'll be I really no, but it, 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 It's more you're kind of down in the trenches more than anything, isn't it? You're not bit of espionage, observing bit it from of, a distance. Yeah, a bit of World War One where you're just running through, like you said, running through the trenches, getting through. A um, few, few little encounters, mini-bosses. Uh, Sindri's not turned up yet. What's happening with, with, with the dwarfs, Portal? Um, Sindri then turns up and says, I've, I've fashioned this with his lovely armour to turn off the siege engines, doesn't he? Yeah, and then you're let loose to be an unlimited bear for a while. <laughs> I did oh, yeah. really enjoy that. That's really fat. Unlimited bear is one of my favourite modes. <laughs> <laughs> even though we can turn into a wolf and stuff like that, I think unlimited bears because it it never run down. Even on hardest difficulty, it didn't run down. You could just yeah. And the enemies respawn if you if if you let them. So always enjoyed a bit of bear time. <laughs> yeah. Um. Then we see um. Ragnarok, the, the embodiment, turn up. And then Jormungandr turns up as well. And what does Thor the two do? Two them fight. What, yeah, they fight. What does Thor do to Jorm- Jormungandr, though? Sends him back in time. He sends him back in time. <laughs> That's right. So the prophecy's correcting something. He fucking knocks him back in time. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Proper dad yeah. move. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 get the, we get that kind of reveal that the... Um... The Odin's put the the people of Midgar up and up That's there. what they were you there know, for, weren't they? Yeah, they, they were the cannon fodder to basically yeah. slow the Kratos' forces down. Yeah. And that's also when Thrud comes into it and actually sees what her grandfather is capable of. And that yeah, because kind of... she loved him up throughout this, didn't she? She trusted him. Yeah. Yeah, she tr- she she trusted Odin and that's kind of like Sif con- the Sif like pointing out to her, No, this is what your granddad's like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, a few hours earlier, I, I, did, I did skip over it, but we saw the scene in the pub 
in the in the tavern where uh, oh, yeah. she, she sees she sees a, a dad become the what she hates about a dad and stuff. So we we seen inklings of her leaving the ace here, weren't we? Like thinking, you know yeah. what? And Sif, I think that was final straw for Sif as well. Yeah, I can't deal so. with this. I'm in a toxic relationship. Uh, my father in law's an absolute prick. I'm done. My daughter's not safe. I've lost my two sons. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And well, the, them two are out. But the, going back to the bit where the Midgardians get pummeled, it's also a moment for Kratos to say to Atreus, you know, this is the cost of war. You, yeah, you know, you, that's, that's the dis- you know, sacrifices have to be made. And this is yep. just part of it. This is what war brings is, you. And he ran it, straight it, into it, war. I, I, I don't know how much you do know of the past games, Kenny, but um, Kratos destroyed Greece completely. Yeah, I knew that. <laughs> he flooded Greece by killing Poseidon. He destroyed mountains by killing Zeus and killed all the Titans. So he's seen how you. That's why he's. That's why he's in Scandinavia because he's got nowhere else to fucking be. <laughs> <laughs> he literally destroyed Greece completely. So he's seen this. He's he's massacred f- millions for the sake of prophecy and stuff like this and <clears throat> war. I did, I did enjoy that moment between Kratos and Atreus as well, where he where he says like, "You have a kind heart. Open it to the suffering of others." Yeah. Yes. Yes, which um, is unlike like, him as well. Well, it, because it, that's then cement that lesson of going on. It's like you don't need to be strong; you need to be better. Be better. And it's like you you can be better than me by doing, opening your yeah. heart to the suffering of others. Because Kratos can't do that. There's a bit where when you're playing as later on in the game, when when you've completed the game, I'm, I'm jumping a little bit. When you get Freya as your main uh, side character, you do some. And there's a bit where um, Mimir, Freya, and Kratos talk about how they feel that um, Atreus is lucky for learning the lessons that Kratos took 400 years to learn. Atreus has learned it in 14 years, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. he's going to be a better person and a better god for knowing this. And I really love that. There's a lot of stuff like that in the end game where they're just inconsequential dialogue. It's fantastic. But yeah, we go in, we, have, we then get to... Um, um, Asgard's uh, city centre. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> the long house, and we have the yeah. game boss, the actual computer game boss. Well, you you, you fight Thor first, yeah, but it's and, uh, it's kind of it's just a that's just one of those. Yeah, I, it's I mean it's it's it, it's not it's not an easy fight that second one against. It Thor. is a, a it lot. is a spectacle boss though, isn't it? It's yeah, it's a spectacle boss, but it is hard because he's chucking yeah, a lot tough. of area of effect it attacks. It's tough, and, and he's he's like, he's like raging really out a lot of the area. M- Mjolnir seems to have homing fucking mode on it as well, but then you, you, do, do, do you notice? Do you notice that for Mjolnir as well, they were using the kind of the Avengers sound pack. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's on, yeah, yeah. It's on. It's on. It's on loan from the Marvel collection. Clinks and clonks. <laughs> yeah, and then we have the the actual video game boss, don't we? I mean, I fucking yeah. The Odin after, after, I, Odin, Odin, after Odin kills his son. Mm. Yes, yeah, kills because, his son because Kra- because Kratos stops the fight and goes, "No, I don't. I'm not going to kill him for our children." Yeah. And uh, fuck as, him. You know, that's what th- he's Thor, like. Thor, yeah, Thor kind of takes it to heart and goes, "No, I can be better for my child." And then Odin just appears and stabs him through the chest and goes, and "You're always weak." Doesn't Throod see this as well? Yeah, and then that's the straw that breaks the camel back in it. Odin uses Mjolnir, doesn't doesn't he? Was it Mjolnir? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he does. Yeah, he does. He does bean Throod in the head with the Mjolnir as well. I think that would kind of maybe put her off her granddad. <laughs> yeah, he knocks her fucking flying, <laughs> doesn't he? He knocks her absolutely flying. into a fucking mountain. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah, the, the moment where uh, Kratos spared Thor was the moment the prophecy like fully changed, because yeah. he, you know he he chose to spare him. Like Mimir was saying, this isn't who you want to be. This isn't you know this is going to cause what you exactly what you don't want. And the moment he yeah. did finally spare Thor, that was the moment that Odin came and stabs him, and you see the prophecy come to life. But it's um, no wait, we've got the Odin boss first. This is what I'm saying. This is the video game boss. It's yeah. my least favorite boss in the game. I would have been happy if we didn't fight Odin in this game. I would have been happy if we had the second Odin fight rather than both of them. The I don't like the bit where the platforms vi- were going up and down. Yeah. And the- well, that's that, that's what I mean. That that I, that I didn't I like. That, that was very video gamey. The the actual when you get kind of underground with him. Oh yeah, that's cool. The, that 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 fight was great. Yeah, that's just cool. That's just a cool spectacle. I don't like where. Like Odin's charging his magic up and you can see the ground going red. I'm like, yeah. this is a video game boss! <laughs> I didn't want this. I didn't want him to be that kind of It was one of the antagonist. easiest bosses, I thought. Because the mechs yeah, were just he was so dull. obvious. Yeah, he was so dull and the ground was going up and down. 
Why would that happen? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Why would why would it ever happen? Oh, it's just weird. Gravity magic? Uh, yeah, <laughs> why not? Um, also in the background, we, they had been talking about Odin making um, these uh, warriors, these dead warriors as well. A little bit of a, a nod to uh, the real thing where Odin's army, is the Aesir army, they, they, they weren't compliant at all, were they? No. <laughs> None of them. They were just reforged. That's why um, in the first game, a lot of hell was backed up as well because Odin wanted to gather a lot of these unwanted souls and turn them back into these, I forgot what they call them again, these thralls or something. <sighs> that was pretty cool. But yeah, um, we get another boss with Odin, like you said. The second, like you said, the second one's a lot better. And then we get the moment, which I thought the game was going to give me a choice. <laughs> Uh, what what you mean, Atreus's choice? Yeah, we don't he get has to choice. choose. Yeah, choose to go with Odin or choose to go with Kratos. If the game would have given you a choice, guys, would you have looked into the all knowingness? Would you? Have no, seen? because I think because uh, I think as soon as you kind of put that mask together and opened the opened the vent, Odin would have just betrayed you. Would you have looked? There was nothing. Candy? Nothing true about what Odin was saying there. She really looked. Wanted, She's I, whispering. I really wanted him to look. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have safe scummed it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> See what happens. See what happens. You've got to peek behind the veil, haven't you? I, 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 I think that's, they should have done that, but then again, they'd have had to cut it, the game as well, wouldn't they? Which is against their ethics, uh, ethos. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this is, again, I think another break in character for um, Atreus. He's like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> Uh, Odin's face when it stops it happening is is perfect, isn't it? It's brilliant. All oh, this for nothing. The actual mafia boss turns up, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, fucking that's it. There it is. Oh, fucking Tony Scaglione. Do you know what I mean? He's coming. He's kicking Tony in. Tony Scaglione. <laughs> <laughs> he's kicking in. He is fucking fuming. But luckily, uh, our band of merry men and Freya, female Freya, she's got other ideas. And she gives him like, a little choke, doesn't she? Yeah. He says, like you said, uh, I always loved you. And then they decide to spare him, don't they? Until. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, so, so um, Atreus kind of sucks his soul out and puts it into one of the empty marbles. Yeah. Um, and, they, and they say, they say you know, they, they're all go, ruminating on it going, no, he's, he's not going to get out of there. We'll just let him stew in there for a while until Sindri just kind of appears. Yeah. Picks it up, puts it on the table, and smashes, smashes it with his hammer. hammer. And then fucks well, off. If you're, then, yeah, if you're not going to do it, this is mine. This is mine. And then he just bl- blips out. <sighs> and, and to be fair, that was a fucking baller move. Yeah. This is when Sindri, <laughs> Sindri entered the upper echelons and my favourite characters oh, yeah. after that Absolute little moment. Absolute badass in that it's moment. like, yes, mate, yes, mate. And um, all this takes its toll on Atreus, doesn't he? Blacks out or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, no, so so uh, fucking Ragnarok, Ragnarok smashes through. That's it. Uh, He's trying to help Freya, then, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, Freya fight. Freya no, dies from yeah, fighting Ragnarok, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, Freya, yeah. Freya holds Ragnarok back. Gets killed. Just as in time, Angra Boda and the good boy open up a portal, and That's they kind it. of all escape out of it while Freya gives his life, so they can go well. Uh, Ragnarok continues to destroy Asgard. Yeah, which is the prophecy. It happened. <laughs> the Aesir yeah. are no more in that realm. Um, we wake up. Uh, one of the um, one of the Valkyries says, "Oh, I'm glad you. I'm glad you, you're back." Then you have a really slow plod to see all your friends again, don't you? For one final time. <laughs> yeah. You speak to people. <clears throat> um, Sif and Thrud, for instance, they say that they were gonna try and help the Midgardians. Do you know what I mean? Big actual, help, 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 yeah, and help settle the Aesir on, yeah, because um, the remain the wherever the, they're going, the innocents to be benevolent gods rather than just fucking whatever Odin wants them to do. You see everybody, you speak to everyone you've ever met, um, and then you see your dad, you see Kratos, and you go have a little walk, don't you? Yep. I did not see this coming. So you walk up, you see the final. Um, uh, billboard, whatever. Shrine. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, you see, you get some revelations. But the main thing I want to discuss at this bit is I didn't think, because um, by this point, he wants to be Loki. I didn't think Loki 
wanted to fuck off on his own. I didn't see it. I didn't see it coming. I I, I think I ca- did. I kind of yeah, I kind of saw it coming. Really? Because there's, there's so much you... foreshadowing of him saying, oh, people saying to him, oh, you've become, you know, you're a man now. You've made your own path and it's time to do your own yeah. thing, especially with his partnership with Angra Boda as well. Yes. And she comes, she turns up, doesn't she? And she's whispering to him and talking to him. And then yeah, this is the it's, moment. It's, 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 also, it's also his desire to rescue the giants. He wants his people he wants, back. He wants his people back, which is understandable. Or he wants to know his people because he's never really known his people aside yeah. from his mother. It's a benevolent so, cause. Yeah, and he's grown up enough now to survive by himself. So I think he sees that as his calling, not yeah. a calling that Kratos needs. He's to basically be now leaving Pallet Town to go on a Pokemon adventure on his own. Yes, he's got little Pokeballs on him. It's time to go, isn't yeah. it? And fly the nest. And this is the moment where Kratos is, is just stood there watching. We, we're back. We're back in Kratos's vision. He's stood there watching him, talking to Angaboda, and this is where his cheeks are wobbling. Yeah, he's crying yeah. as well, as you notice that. He's crying. He's oh, fucking crying. God. He's crying. And he, cause he's well, crying he's, because he knows he's going to say, go on, piss off. Mm. And he knows he's then, ready. Then he get, yeah. yeah, and then he goes and looks around the back of the shrine and there's a second shrine. Yes. Cause, and he opens it up and he sees the bit which actually sets him off full on crying, which yeah. Oh, yeah. that got me. You will be uh, a loved God. You are loved. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And it's like the first time he's had hope in his life to be Anything but a mass murder machine. Yeah. Then a god of war. Yeah, you can you can be this uh, benefactor of good. Because do you know what's quite funny? Like when 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 Atreus jumps off, Loki runs out. He just jumps and climbs up a rock, doesn't he? See ya. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like I think they know they're going to see each other again, which got going to be for yeah, a very they? long time, a very long time. But that scene where he peeks behind that thing, yeah. And I thought we we're going to get a reveal. It's going to be Egypt. Do you know what I mean? I thought we we're going to get something like that. But no, it's better in my opinion. It's, yeah, it, it shows that people worshipping him. He's never had anyone praising him or worshipping him. That's what he is. He's a god. And that's what yeah. gods are supposed to be worshipped and blah, blah, blah. And he walks out of the cave, he talks to Frey and he says, would you join me? And then the end game kicks in and that's it. Yeah, so this so, is where I've played up to. I, I haven't played the point beyond these credits. Have you not? Oh, so you haven't gone to the actual credits then? No, no, no. Because it, it was, it, again, t- time stuff. Well, it's I'm a spoiler cast, so I'm going to have to discuss. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what. So you go to the funeral, basically. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know that bit, yeah. Yeah, you go, you go to the funeral. You get told that uh, Brock's having a funeral. Um, this is proper epilogue stuff, isn't it? Um, this is like after credits scene, even though it's technically not. Uh, you go to Brock's funeral and you think, oh, everyone's going to be happy and stuff. And Cindy just says, nah, nah, nah. Mm. I am fucking, you, you've, this is, this is a, a step too far for me. A threshold that it never be repaired. It's, and this is deeper, I think, than um, Freya and uh, Boulder. Him killing, I think this is, he walks past Crater. And have you seen him shaking his, his hand in a fist as he walks past? He knows he can't do anything. He looks up at him, and he he blips out, and that's it. That's the game. Yeah. And <clears throat> it's so hard to feel am- happy and feel like that you've you've completed everything and the world's at peace when that's that's how it ends. Have you done all the other side stuff then, Candy? No, that's the only one I've done. Because there is, I I will not spoil that out of the out of courtesy to the rest of the stuff, especially with like the crater and stuff like. That. There are hints to what the next game will be, and I'm not going to mention that. Mm. Um, there's reasons to complete the other stuff, trust me. I want to uh, know where the actual tier was the whole time. You'll find out. Oh. You'll find out. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's there, and it was, it was in your face all along. You, I, I'll say this. You meet him and you talk to him. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He joined in, couldn't he, really? <laughs> no, he used him. not when you meet not oh. when you meet him and you find out where he's been. Oh dear. Um, but yeah, that is that is worth really doing because that should have been where the game ended, in my opinion. Because it's such a random thing that you could miss unless you have that, that mission mm. on you. Do you know, it, re- it really feels like after the story, you've still got at least half the game left to do. The, the cr- especially with the crater as well. That's mm. fucking it's massive. You, you, you don't understand... 
It's massive. <laughs> I don't think you'll quite understand. There's like 17 bosses in this crater. Oof. Big bosses. It's fucking huge. And then there's all the other realms. Uh, you've got to find tier, real tier. You've got to find certain things. You've got to... Because the elves had a truce. That's kicked off again. Truce is not stuck. There's so much to do. Mm. There's more weapons that you don't expect. There's allusions to what the next game's going to be. There's ultimate armors for everyone. And there's also uh, Gunnar, the new Valkyrie Queen Ooh. boss fight, which makes the other Valkyrie boss fights in the last game seem like a piece of cake. Oh, fuck that, by, far, <laughs> by far one of the hardest bosses I've ever done. Again, I won brutal difficulty. Um, probably took me about 20, 25 times to beat. And I was at max. Stats, max health, max armor class. I'd done all the trials of Muspelheim, and I How still about fucking struggled. I get you to take over my PS5, and we do it online, and you do it for me. <laughs> I can do that for you, man. I can do it for you. You're on an easy setting as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm on Give Me Grace. Yeah, I had that, I had that weird glitch that happened where you couldn't change your, couldn't change your difficulty setting. <laughs> but yes, that is God of War Ragnarok. Final thoughts, guys. So I think the most powerful scene, and we, we didn't linger on it that long, but the most powerful scene was when they were in the tent and Kratos was telling the story and you just think, well, maybe he is going to go, but he's ready. You know, he's, he thinks he's going to go. He thinks he's going to die. And he's trying to tell He does him. finish that story on the way up to yeah. the uh, last bit, doesn't it? But it could have, it, the, the game makes you think, you know, he's, he thinks he's going to die. He's ready to go and he's made his peace with it. And that's yeah. that's the one scene that really, that, that one got me crying. That's that's the scene I, that, that got me. Yeah, same. And same. we haven't talked about Ratatoska. Because I dis- despised Ratatoska. I love Ratatoska <laughs> almost as much as I love Bitter Squirrel. <laughs> Bitter Squirrel's cool. Yeah. I love Bitter Squirrel. That's what I mean. Rata- I, no, but I loved yeah. Ratatoska. I thought it was so funny. It's so like unexpected. Um, There's such, such more sort of. You haven't done all these missions, though. No, I That's haven't. That's when you start to hate him. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's so fucking... Ugh. But I think that was kind yeah. of a bold move, even having that in there, because it was such a kind of departure from anything in 2018, like such more kind of like... The more Pixar of, moment. Yeah, more of a comedy <laughs> moment. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also, we didn't mention the stuff where the Nidhogg babies, you've got to go find the Nidhogg babies. It's not like one. Muppet babies either. <laughs> <laughs> um, found one by this, accident. The, there's a great side quest with one of the jellyfish. Did you ever do that? I did yeah. that one, yeah. I did get that one. Yeah, there's a few more of them jellyfishes. There's the um, there's the wolves. That's the main part of the main story, though, isn't it, where the wolves signify the start of Ragnarok, where the Chasing wolf the eats sun. the sun. Yeah, they catch the Chasing sun and the they sun. catch the moon. Yeah. There, 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 there was a really great little side moment thing that I got there uh, because, you know, you can change the time of day with the sh- yep. shrine things and yep. that. I fucked it up, and I, 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 I went, I went back to the, back to the moon again. And Freya said, "What, what are you doing? We need to be in the daylight for this." Mm. And Kratos just sits and goes, I, "I wanted to see the wolves again." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's so good. There's more to them wolves in the end game as well. Now, I, I will say that the end game stuff, and especially if you guys left loads of side quests, it's probably another ten to fifteen hours of gameplay. <laughs> fucking massive it could have been one game you know what I mean well I was feeling quite really bereft good. after I finished the uh, story so I'm glad it might see me so over Christmas candy when you I can't wait for you to actually post on our discord and mention the crate and go oh you weren't <laughs> kidding <laughs> <laughs> it's it's huge it's it's bigger than Midgard in first game god <laughs> it's just massive it's absolutely stunningly massive dragons you, you, do you know why you missed all these big spectacle dragon fights they're in there yeah. they're just after the story oh, because <laughs> they're not to put them another couple of them during the fucking story. Yeah, all That's these the big monsters be a lot, are in there. There's going to be a lot of people that miss this because they're getting to the end of the story yeah. and that's it. They put the game back. In so this crater, in this, so huge. this crater biome as well, there's, there's a persistent enemy like a nemesis, which is a centaur type thing. Oh, well, that, that crops up during the story. Does it? Oh, it, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that thing that, it, that, it goes that a bit fur- played three or four times. It goes a bit further on in the crater, crater anyways. It's fucking crazy. You're getting hunted by it. Slowly and stuff, and you've Fantastic. got to, you've got to hunt it back. And, and there's oh, there's so many puzzles to do, and there's 
oh, there's a boss down there that fucking hell. Shadow of the Colossus style. The, I can't believe it they've done what, the, what From Software do where they hide some of the massive areas. Just it's not on the main path. It's very brave. They'll never, they'll, they'll not make DLC for this game because it's already mm. in there. It's already in there. But um, yeah, uh, another moment I like to mention is some of the Easter eggs that it's got in there. Like, did you get the inconsequential dialogue where um, Kratos mentions how he was in uh, um, PlayStation All Stars and Mortal yep. Kombat? Got that one. <laughs> yeah, I got that one. Uh, did you? Did, did, did you read any of any of the poetry? Yes, I read some of the poetry. It all references all PlayStation games. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. Uh, and there's, there's there's one about this being on a steed, which is uh, Days Gone. Oh, actually, when <laughs> yeah. you pick up one of the poetry books, and I think it's um, where the jellyfish thing is, um, yeah. it's got Astro on the front. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, it has. Yep, yeah. there's quite a few. Um, there's a scene in the library. I don't know if you did the library. Um, in Alfheim, there's a, mm. an elven library that's got so much lore in there. You can just literally go around and let Mamiya tell you about the history of the elves and stuff like that. You'll like that if you like Alfheim. Really good bits. Um, no, I don't think I did that one. Oh, this, mate, there's so much game that you've not done. But I think you've done it in the right way. I think you should do this at the end. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, that, that's, uh, that's, I kind of wanted to get the story done then. Because it's like I did with the last God of War. Like uh, I did through the story, and then I went through the side content afterwards. Because I'm keen on getting the story. Plus, also, you know, Pip was watching. It's, yeah. it's kind of it's also it's not mass- really fair. It's not really fair for a backseat gamer to sit there while I go side questing for. Yeah, hours. no, it's not. Yeah, there's also a massive. There's a massive mission. I don't know if you guys did it, but were you trying to get Freya's ultimate sword? Did you do that? I started it, but I didn't get very far. In it it talks I, about I her that- life with Odin and. The divorce and <laughs> and the wedding. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I went because um, he started that at Freya's wedding site. Mm. Um, yeah, I didn't follow that one too far in because again, I was just like, I need to get this finished so we can do this fucking spoiler cast. So, yeah. <laughs> kind of and you can go, you can, you game, can go so. back to, you can go back to um, Johanheim as well and do some stuff over there as Kratos rather than as as boy. Because he never went. Well, yeah, because 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 there's a lot of stuff hit, like hidden there that you need the spear to access yeah. or that you need. The air uh, blades of chaos to burn through and stuff like that. Yeah, go talk to Grandma again. <laughs> you really want to? Oh yes, uh, but yeah, it's a sensational game. Um, again, I'm I'm a bit like Gadget. I think there's a lot of bloat in there. Um, you get, it's a lot of bang for your buck though, because there's loads more game after you've beat it. Like I've said, uh, I'd- yeah, you you do. There there is a lot to the game. Like it's good value for money. The problem is that my that is just my main criticism. I think there is. It's not okay, enough creativity in the enemies or the encounter design in some places. No, like the size of the levels would be fine if you were fa- if there was more variety of enemies to deal with, yeah. or more challenges with enemies. I am with you with the big um, bosses as well. I mean, it feels like I did fight loads of monstrous beasts, but that's because I did everything. You know, what I mean, I did later yeah. on after the game, and that's where I don't understand why the backload all that. I, I think it's a straight. I've spoken to people that have beat it, and they've gone, "I didn't even know the crater was an area. I didn't know this was this or this that." Yeah, it, you know what it, I mean. It, 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 def- it, it definitely needs to. It definitely needed a kind of a really a bit of a shuffle and around of things in there. Because, like I say, the the, the Nithog fight is fucking incredible. It's one of my favorite boss fights of all time. Yeah, it's brilliant. But it's one of the only ones that really sticks in my mind. Yeah, like in the first in, in the game. first one, the dragon one where you fight with the electric when you first get the electric powers yeah. and you pull its fucking tooth out and stuff. Oh, God, and I hated that boss. <sighs> Oh, wait, so I loved it, though. but it was it was spicy. Well, there's a mission in the end game where you've got to kill four different dragons again, like you did in the first one, and they're all beautiful and spectacles. And it's just, it just fascinates me how they can do how, how AAA games now have got the budget to hide things from people that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's majestic. But uh, overall, I want to get your I want to get your final thoughts. I want to get your your score. You know, I love a score, and be brutal. I'm, I I I mark it down as a nine out of ten. Yeah, I think it's an, an excellent game. It's not perfect, but it is a very good ending to that story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think. Um, I enjoyed the character. I, I think it was one of those games where definitely the narrative is the king in it. It is not the narrative is not really well supported by the gameplay. It's not. Is the it? gameplay is fine. 
Mm. The gameplay is last gen gameplay. You know, bear in mind we're in a year with Elden Ring, which took last gen gameplay and amped it up with something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, I think gameplay wise, I think they could have it needed something a little extra squeezed out of it. But that's me nitpicking on something I love. I still love the game, and you haven't like, fully finished it yet. Yeah, like don't take my don't take my criticisms as anything but other than like well, I want the best for my boy. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I, I again, I can't wait while everyone's done everything that I've done, and that's that kind of discourse gets discussed, and, and people are going to be like, "Oh my god, we know what the next game's going to be," because somehow it's not on the internet yet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I haven't seen any of this shit. <clears throat> oh, oh, it's fucking, it's brilliant. I'm not going to tell you wh- where and what, but it's fucking good. It's going to be good. Uh, Candy, yeah. Your final thoughts on score. Yeah, I'm with Gadget. I would give it a nine, whereas I would probably give 2018 a nine point five. And it's just everything's just more epic. And it, like you said, it was 2018 was just a, a prelude to what happens in this game. Like yeah, I said at the it's beginning, tutorial, isn't it? Yeah, it's <laughs> a little bit bloated. It could have been chopped down to. I would have. I mean, what was it like? Thirty hours. It could have been a good twenty twenty five, like Gadget said. Um, yeah. But it's yeah. it's it is very difficult to find too much fault with it. You know, I, I think I think it will change how AAA games are made now. Massively, how <clears throat> these massive budget companies can create something again, backload stuff, hide stuff, have things to continue. This shows that DLC is not necessarily a thing that you need to do. The game sold stupidly well. It gives you a reason. Five million units in its first week. Mm. Yeah, it's on one console. It gives you a reason to own a console. Yeah, it's the (laughs) first of the proper PS5 games. Although, ironically, I do know it's out on the PS4 as well. But it's the first one to really showcase the PS5's potential. I would be interested to see how it does run on a PS4. I've never. I don't know. Apparently, apparently it runs quite well. It's just it's thirty frames a second and it's locked at ten eighty p. Well, that sounds disgusting though nowadays. Yeah, you're, you're probably spoiled by 4K60, aren't you? I fucking am, man. I fucking am. <laughs> but yeah, um, ultimately, I'd give it a 10, actually, because it did everything I want in a game. It was huge, and I like a big, huge game. It is bloated in the story. I enjoyed the game more after the story ended because I got right. the story beats that I wanted after. My favourite parts of these games are the in- inconsequential dialogue when you're walking around with Freya and Mimir. The new, they're my two new. They're my three new favorite trio. That I I prefer Freya and Kratos over Atreus and Kratos because they're not family. Mm. And and I think it's nice to have a male protagonist and a female protagonist, and they are not romantically linked in any way, shape, or form. They fucking despise yes. each other. <laughs> they hate each other. Also, it, I I mean I thought this about the previous game, but it's also nice that you have Freya, a goddess. Who is entirely not sexualized? Yeah. She is, she is strong because she's strong. That yeah. is a reason to be. She's yeah. not tits and ass to look at. Yeah, yeah. It's it. it I, I think it builds upon the last game perfectly. Um, it's weird to say that they're two separate games because they don't feel like two separate games. Again, feels like one big saga, and that's the perfect way to describe it because it's it's Norse, it's Scandinavian. It feels like an epic saga, an ode, a poem. To to this, um, I can tell you now we're not going to see Scandinavia again in this mm. in this series. No. It's done. But where would where would you like Kratos's road trip to turn up next? I know where it's going. That's the thing. <laughs> Do you want to tell you? Yeah, sure. We're going to China. Oh, ooh, China would be interesting. I think most people would have guessed to... Egypt. I I thought I that, but yeah. that 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 civilization was long gone by this time. I was fancying a bit of Japanese. Mm. Well, that's that's it's Eastern. Some pre, some pre, some yeah, some pre-feudal Japanese. Thank you very much. We we'll go, we we'll go, we we'll go in Shinto and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Um, there's there's a lot of explanation as to why in the post-game stuff, um, he's done with Scandinavia. Um, also, literally, Kratos uprights and says, "We're off east. <laughs> We're going east." <laughs> Do you oh, think nice. that Atreus will get his own game? Yes. Yeah. Do you think? I, th- no, I think will. it would. It's going to go on. Yeah, two tangents where they might sort of cross over every now and again. 
Um, oh, fucking hell. Atreus is off to Egypt, by the way. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, they're going separate ways. So, yeah. It's going to be magical. Um, if they're brave enough, they won't call it God of War, Atreus' game. No. They'll call it like Loki or something like that. Oh, do you know what I mean? They'll give it another name. I think this is two separate IPs at this point now. I think they could easily do that. Yeah. I, f- I think the next game will be an older Loki, more more late teens, early early twenties. Kratos will be out fucking wondering. We'll see in, in about five years' time. We'll see a trailer of a man skulking out of some bamboo forests. <laughs> and he'll take a straw hat off, and it'll be yeah. Kratos's head. <laughs> and he'll have a okay. racist well, Fu Manchu mustache. <laughs> he'll do- It'll be it'll be in bad taste, and then we'll we'll see we'll see a Loki sliding down a pyramid because for some reason in games you can slide down pyramids even though they're just steps. <laughs> well, the, well, the pyramids were originally smooth. I thought they were just step. Well, the steps now aren't they? They are now. The steps yeah. now, yeah. No, we're, we're, when they were built, they were smooth. Oh well, that's good then. That's good. But yeah, the, st- the, the stone that made it smooth is all pillaged away. Oh, over thousands of years. But yeah, I think it's sensational. It's a craft that. You see every four or five years. Um, Sony Santa Monica are the studio to watch out for. That I, I don't think they're to watch out for. I think they're the one to beat. Yeah. I think Naughty like, Dog have seen this and bar. gone, fuck. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're set a high bar for narrative adventures. How can and you? I think, go on. I think this is where um, Santa Monica have the edge on Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog do brilliant work, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But Naughty Dog are divesting their time also trying to do multiplayer modes and shit like that. Yes. Like Santa Monica are just focused on telling a really fucking good story with a lot of side content. Yeah. I would like to see them have a rest for a bit and do a, a new IP, but if it ain't broke, don't I, fix it. Yeah, I don't think I think I think they're gonna probably milk this franchise. Like if they're in a position where they can get all this money from Sony to do one game every five years. I think they're content. It stops them needing to crunch and really kill themselves doing it, doesn't it? If they can craft. I think we won't. I, I, I don't I, think we'll see it on I this generation. Was... Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'd be fine enough not to have it on this generation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, also, also bear in mind that they have, they have done one game that has not been God of War. Yeah, with Twisted Metal. No, um, Kinect- Kinetica? Is a racing game on the PS2. I'm sure they did Twisted Metal as well, but they might not have been called Sony Santa Monica then. No, they did external development with. Um, ah, there you go. So they, they, they kind of consult. They yeah. hired out some of their staff to work on them. Yeah. But yeah, they, they were involved with three of the Twisted Metal games. But yeah, apart from the games they've developed in house mm. from 2005 to now is all being God of War. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And as we're recording this, we found out that it has got game, it got some game of the year awards, didn't it? Not not the game of the year award. It did. It, it didn't it, get game of the year awards at the game awards. Yeah, that, got, that it, went to Elden Ring. It got loads of shit though, didn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it won most of what. It um. So the game awards, it got best narrative. Yep. Best score for Bear McCreary. Best audio design. Best performance for Christopher Judge. Best action adventure and innovation and accessibility. Mm-hmm. Um, at the Titanium Awards, it got Game of the Year and Best Best Narrative Design. Fuck! It's been nominated in the Golden Joysticks for Ultimate Game of the Year and Best Performer. I think it's got. I, I think someone I was reading on Twitter. Do you know the video game Baftas or whatever they're called? Uh, Baftas, yeah, yeah. It's it's up for it's it's like Bucky's favorite as well. Because Probably there's a bit be, more yeah. narrative based than like an Elden Ring, isn't it? Those those kind of. Awards. I mean, yeah, but yeah, but also Elden Ring's been nominated for best narrative in a lot of things Great as well. Great narrative. So. But yeah, I, I think we've been, gonna find the fucker. We've been spoilt for amazing games this year as well. But it's been a good year for gaming. Yeah, yeah. But this one is a lovely like tip of the hat at the end of the year. I don't think nothing touches this now. There's a few I, games I, I, out actually, now. Actually, actually the, the 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 critical question that I have for Candy on this one is. Which is better for you, God of War Ragnarok? I knew you were going to ask me that. Stray. Oh. There you go. <laughs> she, she likes cats. She likes the funny cat game. Yeah, I, I love Stray as well. But yeah, thank you for, jo- so do I. for, for joining us on this Odyssey. Um, I did, like I say, I had the synopsis for everything here, but I'd have still been reading the synopsis now. <laughs> it's seven pages long. 
And yeah, again, it's a long story. I got things wrong and the wrong way around, but ultimately, you know that we loved it. Um, as patrons are, not, it's not even patrons, it's for everyone, isn't it, this one? Yeah, it goes out first for patrons. If you've got anything to discuss on this, um, feel free to let us know later on. We'll discuss it on, on the main podcast if you've got anything to say about it. Because I know a lot of you are going to listen to this months, months and months later because it takes you fucking ages to complete games because yeah. you've got I mean, proper I mean, lives. It, yeah, <laughs> it is actually, sorry, sorry uh, just to interrupt, it is actually typifying of it. I just looked up God of War Ragnarok all cutscenes on YouTube. Yep. Fifteen and a half hours. Okay, that only cost. It only took me twenty eight hours to beat the game. <laughs> so I think it's it's seven and a half hours for the core story, but then fifteen hours overall for like all the side stuff as well. Oh my god! It took me twenty eight hours to platinum it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me! Wow, but yeah, fantastic game. I look forward to what this studio have next. And thanks for listening to this meandering tale of Norse mythology. Uh, we hope to see you in seven years' time when we uh, do a spoiler cast for the next game in the franchise. <laughs> God of War. God of War Stories Atreus. Yeah, yeah God of War Stories Atreus <laughs> or God of War Land of the Rising Sun or whatever it wants to be called. I, they're not, they're not going to call it that. No, they're not. Either. They're going to call it something poignant. Journey to the East. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And we hope you have a great new year. Oh, whenever you're listening to this, we hope you have you hope we've had a good new year. Goodbye. Thanks, Candy. Thanks, Gadget. Bye. 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 Fuck are you waiting for? Your daughter. My son calls her friend. If you try to hurt her... I would not. Don't you know... What I've done? Yes! But what will you do now? We don't change. We are destroy us. No more. No more. For the sake of our children. We must be better.